back. It must be Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, the 14th of October. I don't know during COVID. My name's Teacher Tony. This is BSA Live. And these are today's stars today. I often say tomorrow's stars today, but it's today's stars today. Let's give ourselves a big round of applause for showing up to another wonderful showcase. Our celebrity industry guest is Alicia Brooks. Let's hear it for Alicia Brooks. So excited. So Alicia, let's turn your microphone on and let's ask you a couple questions. Alicia is a director and writer. We won't mention the name of the big movie she's working on because this is an all ages show, but it's a wonderful <laughs> chocolate's better than dancing, chocolate's right, better sure. than reading, chocolate's better than everything. So that's Ooh. my introduction to Alicia Brooks. So how are you? I'm well, thank you so much. You know, um, I've just been working on a set actually, um, can't tell you what it is, but basically um, I have been working uh, to help get the show on the road for production uh, as a COVID officer, where a lot of us are contributing in that manner. So, you know, uh, it's fabulous. It's, it's like finally- You need to go to a different room, Finally Mom. seeing oh, things no. again guys, it's <laughs> happening. <laughs> so um, Alicia, you've been directing and writing for quite a while. Um, right. And I know you I have know. a wonderful project, but how did you get into writing and then into directing? Oh, wow. Great question. Okay, so I was probably your guys' age when I knew I wanted to be a writer. I mean, I, I think I started realizing I wanted to write when I was about seven. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think all of us artists are kind of inherently... Um, embedded into this field, you know, we, we latch on to something. For some of us, we might latch on to movies. For others, we latch on to books. And um, what occurred for me is I, I love storytelling and I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of poetry. By the time I was 13, I had uh, 300 pages of lyrics and poems and I had stories up the yin yang you know and and um i had started novels i had started uh screenplays i, I actually found an old screenplay from myself when i was about 13 years old mm. and uh i i was kind of um you know surprised that at that age i had already been thinking about screenplays because when I first really seriously entered it, I had been writing and directing plays in San Diego. So I was writing and directing plays and, and along comes a film festival to San Diego. And I said, wow, a film festival, now that sounds interesting. So I went to the film festival and I sat uh, listening to all the panels and I watched the short films and the features and I said to myself this is where it's at this is where I'm supposed to be you know a writer inherently a novelist they're kind of um, sitting by themselves alone you know with their thoughts and me I am extremely outgoing I did a lot of acting as a kid um, and you know, I just felt like for me, the, the place I needed to be was putting my work out there for everyone to see, and that was film. So I've done both. Obviously, I've done film and I have done um, novels, so I, I've done it all. But um, at the same time, I really felt that draw into the, the film industry, and, and then it was all over, you know. Um, I started converting my novels to screenplays and, and I had produced short films before I even went to film school. Um, what's so funny, Tony, is uh, a few years back, I, I found some family footage and I'm the one holding the camera. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I was like seven or something. You know? It's nice to say you actually fell in love at a very early age. I think mm -hmm. most of these people did as well. Mm -hmm. Thus, they're pursuing uh, their passion. So would you suggest just starting? You don't have to master it. Just start and you get start. better. Go. Absolutely. You know, this is the thing. And, and actually, you guys are, wow, you guys are entering this field at a very good age. Um, this is an impressionable age. 
So I understand that sometimes you're going to get discouraged. But what I don't want you to do is stop because some adult who knows better than you says that, you know, oh, you know, it's not good enough or this or that. Don't stop. And, and I'm going to tell you something that's super important. It's all about the message. It is. It's all about the message. So if you don't have the very best equipment to make music videos, you know, if your video can't be as, as good as the one that we just saw because you don't have the technology, it doesn't matter. Do not stop yourself because you don't have perfection. And I have already told, you know, as a producer myself, I have been in the last few months speaking with a lot of producers and consulting them. And here's what I get. Oh, I don't have enough uh, equipment or I don't have the right equipment or I don't have the skill yet. And I'm like, why, why are you doing that to yourself? Why? Why are you stopping yourself? You have an exceptional concept for a show and yet you are not making it. Why are you not making it? You know, they want to reach this like perfection before they even write a word. I'm like, no, no, no. Right. Listen, it's not about perfection. It's about the message. Uh, Mila wanted to find out how do you get subscribers, right? How do you get people following you? Um, she was worried about having subscribers and followers. Don't be worried about that. You have to be looking at your message. So if something is stopping you from communicating, look and see what is that thing that's stopping me from communicating? Because I have a message to tell. You know, with my novels, I self-published. If I waited for these publishers, if I had to wait for them, please don't wait for them. Okay. You want to make something, you make it. Right. And Alicia, we met in a networking event. I, it was a we birthday did. party. And, mm -hmm. and so just showing up to events, which most of you guys do and, right. and your social media accounts, mm -hmm. you never know who's watching or who's going to be there. So always, you know, have your A game on you know, look, look who like you think your image should be when you go out in public. Today, I'm just playing, we're doing comedy. So I'm doing my cowboy hat just to have fun. But you know, it's it really is an image you present. Now, Alicia saw me on a stage receiving some special uh, acknowledgement. And uh, she came up to me because of who I was with, looked like a person that fit a movie she had just written. And she's like, Oh, my God, and she'd never seen her act in her life. But she's like, you're the character I wrote coming to life. Mm -hmm. And so she had an opportunity to work in the movie. Her acting was good. It could have been a little better, but in but she ran with her marketing and she was the face of the movie for right. multiple years, just based mm -hmm. on being at the right place at the right time. So right. networking is really important. I teach these kids about networking. So right. um, I, do you still do a lot of networking during COVID? I do. I do a lot of networking. Um, so I have an app. It's interesting. Uh, I really want you guys to look for these different apps and just be, you know, be careful, be selective. Um, but I do have an app that's uh, that I'm using for business, but it also, <laughs> funny enough, it also is a, like a singles app. So you have to select, you have to select business part, you know, the business part. So, um, but I have an app and I've been meeting uh, filmmakers and producers and editors and musicians because I, I, obviously I produce music videos as well. Um, but I am on all of the film networks, Stage 32. So if you're not on Stage 32, get on Stage 32, get on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is a business resource and I do trust it. I think it's been very good. It's gotten me some great cinematographers so that's a, a really great place to start. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're going to be doing networking. So, and you're even networking when you're on set. Exactly. Right? Um, so here's the big question. Um, I know even if you book the part after five callbacks and you're mm -hmm. on set, you can still lose the job on set. Yes, you can. And so always know that somebody's watching you 
that there's somebody behind you that wants your job. So always present your best. Today is a dry run. These kids just got some of their scenes this week, some yesterday. So today is a dress rehearsal. Next week is the show time, just so you're aware. But are you looking at these kids and, and really willing to give them your honest feedback, not because they're young, but because of your experience in the field? Would you be willing to watch their performances tonight? Absolutely. Okay, you guys ready for that? All right, let's hear it for Alicia Brooks. Big round of applause, high on your camera so she can see you. Thank Kelsey, you. everybody, you give love, we get love. All right, guys, I know most of you are in character. You guys are ready to do your scenes. So we are going to go to our first performance of Sam and Cat, and this is their rendition. This is Ella, and this is Reese. You guys are both, I think, 11. Turn your mics on. Reese, Hello. Ella. Hi. Hi, how old are you? I'm 11. And how long have you been acting? Um, since theater, since I was six, and film, since I was eight. Love it. And Reese, once we get her back, Reese, how old are you? I'm 11. And how long have you been acting? Well, um, I wanted to be in the industry since I was six, but it actually, like, got, um, serious about it when I was eight, so it was kind of like, like and, it was. <laughs> and you're a professional tap dancer, and a pageant girl, and a singer, and learning guitar, and multiple, multiple things. You're not beyond a triple threat. You're like a quadruple exponential threat. <laughs> yeah? You ready for the scene? Mm-hmm. Okay, I guys. Am. So Mila, our stage director, let's give them the stage. We go to a stage view so it goes back and forth. Make sure you guys are dominant with the first scene so whoever starts it has the camera on them. And I'm gonna mute, everybody mute. And let's put our hands together for our first scene tonight from Reese and Ella. This is a Salmon Cat rendition. I'm gonna hop on the old bike, see where it takes me. Okay, but it seems like we had a lot of fun over the past couple days and we sort of had this odd couple dynamic. Built-in conflict and lots of potential for more adventures. Oh, forget it. No, 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 wait. I don't really have anywhere I need to be and you kind of look like you need a roommate. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yeah. You're gonna stay here in LA for a while and help me find a roommate? I already found your roommate. Shut up, who is she? Me. Oh my gosh, it's the best day ever. So much better than yesterday when we were in garbage. Isn't it? <laughs> so what's for dinner? All right, guys, I think we had a technical difficulty, but big round of applause so far. That was very, very good. So Ella, let's yes. talk to you really quick. Let's go back to group view so I can talk to everybody. Reese, we lost your sound. Are you back? Yes, sorry, my internet cut out. It's okay, this is live theater. So you wanna pick up where you are? This is what we do in film. We don't do it on theater stages, but in film, we, we can go take two. You wanna do a take two? Okay. You wanna do it as a pickup? Or you guys wanna do it from the top? Uh, what do you wanna do? I'm fine with whatever. Why don't we do a pickup? See if you guys know what pickup means, just for Alicia. So a pickup means go back a line or two. All right. Do you know what, what line you're going to start with? Um, I'll start with, so what's for dinner? Perfect. Let's go back to the stage view, Mila, and let's meet. So what's for dinner? Uh, I'm thinking free cheeseburgers. Two in and out burger. Yeah! All right, guys, that's how we do pickups. That was great. So let's uh, give them a round of applause. I love that. You guys are awesome. Uh, let's turn your mic on, Alicia. Let's get your mic on. And let's go back to group view, Mila. So uh, what did you think of our first um, performers on the stage tonight? I thought it was great. Now, what I would like to see is a little more of the emotional scales. Mm -hmm. You know, there's... Um, uh, <laughs> Sometimes you, you have uh, enthusiasm for one part and then there, there's a different emotion, you know, when you do a, a different line or, you know, when you're communicating something else, right? And so those things can change the way we directors look at the characters. So when you've decided, oh, you're going to make this whole character enthusiastic and that's all they ever do, it, it can be a character. There, there are people out there like that, Phoebe Buffet, right? Um, but, you know, at the same time, you, I felt like there could have been just a little, you know, some changes that we could see. 
in the emotional scales, you know? Yeah. So do you guys know where you could add that, Ella and Reese? Do you have some ideas how you could? What's the best ride? What do we always say? The best ride, the best audition is? On the ride, ride home. <laughs> right, so what do we do? We audition many times on the ride there, so the ride home's in the room. Yes. So on the ride home, you say, I left it all in the room. There's nothing else I could have left. Mm. So this is your second chance, which is the ride home, going, I wish I would have done this, this, and this. Let's put it back on stage. You guys want to try one more time? Yes, here. Okay, we're going to take one more note, then we're going to talk to Peter and Alicia, and we're going to move on. So this is this is your ride home. All right. Uh, um, since I just took everything out of my bag, I have to put it all back. I know. We got to prep yeah, our props. Yeah, with me. I have to do the ponytail. I know. We master our props, don't we? You guys are great. So Mila, go ahead. Go back to stage view. And everybody mute. And are you guys almost prepped? I'm ready. All right, here we go. In five, four, three, two, action. going to hop on the old bike, see where it takes me. Okay, but it seems like we had a lot of fun over the past couple of days, and we sort of had this odd couple dynamic, built-in conflict, and lots of potential for more adventures. Oh, forget it. No, 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 wait. I don't really have anywhere I need to be, and you kind of look like you need a roommate. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes. <laughs> you're going to stay here in L.A. for a while and help me find a roommate? I already found you a roommate. Shut up. Who is she? Me! <laughs> oh my gosh! This is the best day ever! So much better than yesterday when we were in garbage. Is <laughs> it? So, what's for dinner? Uh, I'm thinking free cheeseburgers. Two in and out burger! <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! All right, big round of applause. Uh, Alicia, put your mic back on. Did you, uh, did they take your direction? I believe they did. Look at that. That's how you maybe get a call back. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, would you have given them a call back? I would have given them a call back uh, on the first one because I like the energy. <laughs> and when you, give, when you get something, then you can tweak it. Then you can find out if they can take direction. Um, I think that they took direction well because I saw them see the images in their heads and then speaking, which is what gave them the hills and valleys. Right. And what do we say, guys? See it, then say it. 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 Right? Yep. All right, guys. That was a really good way to open the show. Thank you so much. All right. So we're going to go to... You guys want to do friends first, or you guys want to do married with children? I think we should do friends first. What do you guys yeah, say? Yeah, I agree. Friends. All right, let's, let's do it. Okay. Now, you know Friends is one of the best sitcoms ever, besides Lucille Ball, of course. But they worked... 10 to 12 hours on show day, not to mention the whole week of rehearsals. Imagine the amount of energy for 12 hours to stay on in comedy. So just think about that for this quick little two minute scene that you guys are doing. Okay, bring the energy. Okay, listen. One thing, Tony. Listen, yes ma'am. Um, so he, he was talking about rehearsals 10 to 12 hours a day. Here's one thing that you really have to realize is when you're doing rehearsals, even if it's the hundredth time you've done it. It is the first time. Every time is going to be your first time. The audience does not want to see you bored. The audience does not want to see you looking like you've said this a gazillion times. So what we really want to see is we want to see this happening right in front of us. It's, it's developing as we go on as if it's the first time, even if you've said it a thousand times, okay? Love it. So take that note, guys. Uh, Kendall, we need your camera on, right? Or, Mr. Know. Tony, are, yes. oh. do you want us to do the hide self-view thing? No, not today. Today's just a dress rehearsal. But thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, today, Mila, I think... I mean, it's not, it's not too bad. If everyone turns off their camera, then I can do it automatically. Uh, I'm okay with it today. Let's okay, just cool. keep everybody on. Cool. Let's keep it on group view, though, so not stage view. So That's it's great. like, okay. this is going to be like the Brady Bunch box, Alicia. And so you'll just have to find who's talking. Sometimes we do stage view, but I think for today, I just want to see everyone in the same room. Okay. So if you guys are not performing in this, you're background actors. And if you're background actors, you need to be committed to a choice that your character is doing something because everybody that's in the scene is in the scene, right? So make a choice. What do you, you're at a restaurant, you're at a diner. You're, you're maybe waiting for someone to show up. Maybe you just had coffee, but everybody's involved on this stage today. Okay. So participate in whatever way you see fit. And 
Let's see, is everyone ready? Thumbs up if you guys are ready. Okay, everyone's trapped in our little Zoom box. We're doing the best we can. Let's get ready to go live. Five, four, three, two, one, action. All finished here? Uh, yeah. Great. Dude, you just took my cookie. You said you were done. <sighs> Whatever, have it. Okay, so here are the tips from this morning. 50 for me, 50 for Jen, and Joey owes me eight. What? For all the free food you gave away. Well, if it's free food, then how come you're charging me for it? Because you don't give away something unless it's somebody's birthday. Well, what if they came third in a modeling contest? No, okay? You don't give anything away, even if somebody's been third in a modeling contest and nobody even knows about, you just don't give it away. Well, what about... Joey, stop! Okay, you're getting on my nerves right now. Oh, I just had the hardest day. Someone needs way so much. Jill, how did you pay for all this stuff without your dad took away your credit card? Oh, please. I memorized that number when I was 15. Anyways, does anyone want to see the cool all make on my own stuff I got? Uh, I don't think charging new clothes to your dad's credit card counts as making it on your own. Oh, Mr. Scientist has to get all technical. Seriously, I don't think Rachel's going to think it's a good idea. Uh, okay, so who made her queen of the world? I would love that job. Hey, guys. What's going on? Jill? Did you shop? No. Um, uh, they, they did. Yeah. Yeah, we went shopping. We went shopping. Wait, you guys went shopping? What, and then you just came in here and rubbed it under Jill's nose when you know she's trying to quit? Guys, that's that's terrible. Sorry, sorry, sorry Jill. Jill. So what'd you get? Oh, oh, well, I got these, um, you know, I got these, these apartment pants, you know, uh, yeah. A apartment pants? Yeah, you never heard of them? No, of course. Of course I've heard of them. Ross, what'd you get? Hmm? Oh, I got this. This. A pashmina? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just love these babies. <laughs> really? Ross, what's a pashmina? It's a rug. Jill? Oh, I'm so sorry, Rachel. Oh, come on. You really think that's going to work on me? I invented that. Oh, right. But I am sorry. It's okay. One little slip up is all right, but just don't let it happen again, all right? Okay. Okay. Well, since Daddy paid for all this, I really should take it all away. But I'm just going to take the page. You know what? I'm just going to take all of it because that way, you know, you'll really learn the lesson. All right, well, I have some errands to run, and I will see you at dinner. She took all my stuff. Yeah. Everything but the little blue one. Oh, my, that's the best one. Thank you so much. Well, hey. Yeah. You know, that was really lame. Like, a pashmina could be a rug. What about you with the, oh, I'm sorry. I was not like that at all. What about, what about, what about, what about the apartment pants? You know, how dumb was I? You know, Ross, were you always this cute in high school? Oh, stop. Uh, no, you stop. No, you stop. No, you stop. No, okay, no you. Why don't, okay, okay, why don't I just stop and go in the middle and then you'll both stop. How are you doing? I hear you have a good memory. You think it's better than mine? Yeah, totally. Prove it. What's your daddy's credit card number? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You getting this? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Alrighty, thanks. Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh my, did Joey just try to steal my daddy's credit card number? Yeah, but you just counted to 16. 
Well, you think I'm really actually going to give him the number? I'm not stupid. Hey, cookies on the house. Oh, wow, thanks. Didn't I just tell you not to do that? No, I put it on my tab. Hmm. Okay, well then how are you going to pay for your tab, Joey? With my new credit card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Didn't you just count to 16? Yes. Yes, he did. Mm. You're fired, okay? I'm so done with you. You're, okay, go. Great. See you tomorrow at 9. Hey, Gunther. I, uh, I hear there's a job opening. Where do I apply? Baby, baby, you already work here. Oh, that's right. That's a stupid hat. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? All right, big round of applause, everybody. All right, just a quick two cents for me. You guys need to pick up your cues. We need to pick this cue up, cue on cue, line on line on line on line on line on line, a lot faster, okay? But other than that, let's go to Peter, then to Alicia. Peter, comments on what you saw? You saw him last week. What do you think? Um, yeah, and of course, today I was background, so I was listening. <laughs> and you're right. I mean, there was like, it was different. It was off today for some reason. Maybe slow. they're nervous, maybe because the, the, the director's here. But mm -hmm. the characters were strong. They just weren't um, connected. They, they weren't, mm -hmm. um, um, like you said, connecting the lines uh, mm -hmm. spontaneously. Spontaneity was gone. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think timing will fix it, just picking up line on line on line on line. Um, we went up on one or two lines. That's fine. Um, we added a couple lines. But at the end of the day, you guys, this is a good one. What's our best audition? On the ride home, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you're lucky enough to have a director or casting director give you a second ride home audition, take it and bring it the second time. I got a second chance at General Hospital, and I was able to work on GH for a year because somebody gave me a second chance. Most people will. Uh, let's go to Alicia, her thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I had the same, the same timing issues, but another thing that I detected was um, dropping. You know, you're not finishing, you're not coming through with your line. Don't drop it, don't drop the end. This, this may be uh, an indicator of why there was uh, a timing issue or two is like, if you're gonna do that line, do it. You know, don't, don't drop it at the end as if it's unimportant. Okay, hey, perfect. All right, guys, so you took the notes. You guys wanna try it one more time? And then Kelsey, you normally start with the guitar, right? Did you wanna yeah, start? I was going to, um, but then, you know, Joey was just on the ball. So I it's was good, like, sure. Yeah. Well, let's My go ball. with that. Perfect, so we are going to. Oh, could I say something real quick? Yes, Regan. Uh, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. uh, before you um, ask me the other thing, I have to I have to talk about my uh, sweater and my pants. I mean, you like said your line before I do oh. that. <laughs> so the the other joke didn't make sense within that. Just Jeffrey, God. The, the term, <laughs> no worries. The term for that is called jumping lines. So yeah. But okay, guys, um, that's the first one. That's that's the backstage just rehearsal. This is the show. Adrian joined us. Thank you, Adrian Carr. He may have to jump off early or he is working while he's watching. We're grateful you're here every week, but just know he may be working, but we're honored that he is back. Once again, Adrian Carr. Um, we have Alicia Brooks up there, Adrian. She is our guest, our celebrity guest. And of course, our returning guest is Peter Estrada. No relation to Eric, which is Peter's joke. Um, all right, guys, I'm excited. Remember, I'm wearing this hat because I want to remind you, have fun. We're not having fun. That's what's missing. We're not having fun. Have fun, okay? Um, yeah, Alicia, can I, I say one thing also? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. So guys, just, just think of, um, you know, a ping pong game, right? So comedy, comedy, you're playing off of each other. Ping pong, Chinese, you know, Chinese tennis, right? Ping pong, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's how swift comedy goes. This is not British comedy. This is American comedy. So you're just going to like, you know, that this is it. Okay. Yep. And remember, these are some of the best writers for sitcoms. They, they were on for 10 years being paid a million to $2 million in a week, an episode, because they were the best. So you guys are going on the heels of the best. You have to trust the lines because they did the work on the lines. You guys just need to get the lines out. 
get the lines out, okay? Um, and last but not least, we did write some of those lines, Alicia. I don't know if you knew which ones we wrote, but we wrote maybe 25% of the lines you heard we wrote as a group. So we tried to blend those in to see if you would notice where we added our, which means these kids can write. You guys can write. We're gonna ask her later, which lines did we write and which lines did friends write? So see if she watches for that now. And Adrian as well, and Peter. Okay guys, let's keep it on stage view, or excuse me, group view. And let's go, you guys ready? Five, four. Oh, sorry, hold on, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Is it okay with the whole turning off and turning on the camera thing? Does that like read well, or should it, we just? It, it, it read. I mean, okay. today is just just rehearsal, so you don't okay. have to do that. But if you want to do it, you go for it. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, here we go, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, and action. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Oh, finished here. Uh, yeah. Great. Dude, you just took my cookie. You said you were done. Oh, whatever, have it. Okay, so here are the tips from this morning. 50 for me, and then 50 for Jan, and, 50, and Joey owes me eight. What? For all the free food you give away. Well, if it's free food, then how come you're charging me for it? Because you only give something away if it's somebody's birthday. Well, what if they came third in a modeling contest? No, you only give free food if it's somebody's birthday, not even if they've come third place in a modeling contest that literally nobody knows about. Well, what Joey, about- no. Oh my, these, some of these bags weigh so much. The hardest day ever. Jill, how did you pay for all this stuff? I thought your dad took away your credit card. Uh, when I, I memorized these numbers when I was 15. Anyways, does anyone want to see all the cool making on my own stuff I got? This is my, don't you want to hire me sweater? And these are my, don't you want to rent me these apartment pants? I don't think charging new clothes to your dad's credit card counts as making it on your own. Okay, Mr. Scientist wants to be all technical. Oh, seriously? Seriously, I don't think Rachel's gonna think it's a good idea. Uh, okay, so who made her queen of the world? I would love that job. Hey guys, what's going on? Jill, did you shop? No, 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 the, they did. Yeah. yeah, we, we went, went shopping. shopping. Oh, hold on, you guys went shopping? What, and then you just came in here and rubbed it under Jill's nose when you know she's trying to quit? Guys, that's terrible. Sorry, Sorry Jill. Jill. So what'd you get? Oh, 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 I got this, 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 this. I, I, I want a job sweater. And oh. then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then I got these, I want to buy an apartment pants. Apartment pants? Yeah, you never heard of them? No, of course. I've heard of them. Ross, what'd you get? Hmm? Oh, I got this. This. A pashmina? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just love these babies. Really? Ross, what's a pashmina? It's a rug. Oh. Jill? <laughs> Rachel. Come on, you really think that's gonna work on me? I invented that. Oh, yeah, right. But I am sorry, though. It's all right. You know, one little slip up is okay, but just don't let it happen again, okay? Okay. All right, so now, since Daddy paid for all this, I really should take it away. But I'm just gonna take Pash. You know what? I'm just gonna take all of it because that way, you know, you'll you'll really learn a lesson. Okay, I gotta run some errands and I will see you later. She took all my stuff. Yeah, everything but little blue one. Ross, that's the best one, thank you so much. Well, hey. You know, that was really lame. Like a pashmina could actually be a rug. Uh, what about you with the, uh, I'm sorry. I was not like that at all. What about, what about, what about, what about, what about me in the, uh, the apartment pants, right? Like, how dumb was I? <laughs> uh, Ross, were you always this cute in high school? Uh, oh, stop. <laughs> uh, no, you stop. Uh, no, you stop. No, you stop. Okay, no. all right, all right. Okay, why don't I just sit in the middle and then you'll both stop. How you doing? 
I hear you have a good memory. You think it's better than mine? Yeah, totally. Prove it. What's your daddy's credit card number? Well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You got that? Six, yeah. Okay, yeah. seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, thanks. Oh my, did, did Joey just try to steal my daddy's credit card number? Yeah, but Jill, you, you just counted to 16. Well, obviously I'm not gonna give him the actual number. Not them. Hey, cookies on the house. Oh wow, thanks. Didn't I just tell you not to do that? No, I put it on my tab. Okay, well then how are you gonna pay for your tab, Joey? With my new credit card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mm, did you just count to sixteen? Yes. Yes, he did. Okay, Joey, you're fired. Great. See you tomorrow at nine. Hey, Gunther. So I, uh, I hear there's a job opening. Where do I apply? Yeah, but you already work here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's a stupid hat. Smelly cat, smelly cat. What are they doing? Good job, Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, it was it was a little better. The timing was a little bit better, but you're still missing cues. Just the the entry. You got to guys have to know a couple of your pre pre cue lines so that you're already moving into your cue line and then you're already on your line. So it's just a rhythm. It's a timing, and thus that's why they did ten or twelve hours to get their rhythm as well. And they were all making millions of dollars. So um, it's it's a thing for all of us. Theater, Peter, you know about theater. And Alicia, you know about directing. Let's go first to Alicia. Did they take direction? What were your thoughts? And would you maybe want to give them direction? They're going to do it again next week. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the the scene went better. Again, yeah, there is there are some timing issues. And I have no idea whether that's because we have, you know, delays on Zoom and, uh, you know, this is the thing is, this is what we're doing right now. But once you guys are on set, just make sure that, you know, you come together and you really treat this with a lot of sincerity and a lot of professionalism. That's what we're looking for, you know, is professionalism because yeah, this is really fun. It is a fun job and it's fun to create and that's why we do what we do. But above all, be professional. Sounds good. And Peter, any, any thoughts of your theater background? What would you do in theater for this? Um, I, I reiterate what I've said before. Keep in mind that pace is also handled by motivation. If Joey understands that he, that's his line for picking up on girls and getting on their good side, that's how it should be said. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> you want to give me that little uh, credit card of yours? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you have a motivation and that brings you into what Alicia said about carrying on the emotion into the next line. If you know what you're trying to do and you keep doing it, you're going to be cut off by somebody else. And that makes it look normal and natural. Uh, uh, when she comes in and takes all your stuff, she should be getting that idea ahead of time, I think, by seeing all this stuff. Ooh, ooh, I need one of those. Oh, that's cool. You know what? I'm going to take it all. You know, just to teach you a lesson. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I don't have to save money. Everybody has to have an agenda, and that controls the energy, the hills and valleys, the emotions going in and out. Always Perfect. remember what you're after. Thank you. I appreciate the comments from our experts. Um, you guys, I'm, I'm proud of you. I know you can do a little better, so we got a week to work on it for next week. But I think you guys got some great notes. It's really, if we are having problems in our Zoom room with technology, we have to know the rhythm enough to start to jump the line, because you guys know the lines. So to tighten the line up, you almost want to start speaking when the other person is speaking, but you don't want to jump the line, right? You got to figure out the rhythm and it's the dance. And in the dance creates great sitcoms, okay? But really, really good work. and. Alicia, quick question. Did you have any idea what lines the kids wrote and what lines were the friends scene? No, I didn't. It's I pretty didn't. good. And it was so great because I, I had complete faith that, that they were all the writer's lines. Oh, <laughs> that's were, wonderful. They looked so good and the, and the kids were just great. And I especially love uh, Kelsey for her Phoebe. She, she does such <laughs> a great job with Phoebe. It's really yeah. fun. 
So. But we wanted to give the beginning and ending more of an oomph because some of the kids were just one lines. Mm -hmm. So we fattened up both the beginning and the end. So the credit card, obviously the one to 16 was ours. Um, great. The whole ending. I mean, so the beginning and ending was all BSA stage. Oh, great. Yeah. I, I had suspicions about the suspicions about the credit card, but, but I actually could imagine him doing that. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys, I'm really proud of you. I think one more week will be really good. Um, Adrian's working, we'll ask him on this next one. We're going into uncharted territory now. We're going to attempt a married with children scene with basically a half a rehearsal yesterday. So it is going to be very raw, but we're, we're gonna put it up anyways because this is backstage. Okay, you guys ready to put this up? This is a very dress dress rehearsal. Okay, and our cast, is uh where's peg bundy raise your hand that's deanna hickman is peg bundy say hi there we go we hi. have uh let's ha let's go around the room jeff what are you playing i am al or nephew or dad <laughs> yeah, age appropriate he's obviously not going to be the dad so we had to tweak that a little for him uh kelsey what character are you playing kelly i'm the teenage daughter you're the, the bleach blonde, blonde straw haired um, daughter. It's not Holden, straw. What, straw. <laughs> what character are you playing, Holden? I'm Uncle Irwin. Are you your Uncle Gorwin? Uncle <laughs> Irwin. Uncle Irwin. Okay, Mila, uh, you're a stage director on this, correct? I'm not in it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Ethan, what character are you? You're backstage with us, yes? Yeah, but I'm okay. Bud, Bud Bun. D. Oh, you're Bud Bundy. That's correct. That's our little Bud Bundy. Uh, Reagan. I'm playing an old guy who's another uncle. Who's right, like good casting. Total tight casting for you. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Perfect. I, the gay uncle. That's Perfect. Couldn't be more tight cast if we tried. Uh, Ella's watching. She's our backstage technician. She's pulling the ropes of the curtain and dropping the ropes, putting the bricks on. Peter Rick knows that reference. Uh, Kendall, what are you playing? Are you you're backstage as well? Backstage. She's backstage, and Jocelyn, you're backstage as well. Reese is backstage, and Adrian Carr is backstage. Okay, guys, that's our cast. This is our first attempt. You guys ready? Let's keep it in stage view like this, or excuse me, group view like this. You guys put your thumbs up if you're ready. Oh, wait, I don't have a group view. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you, oh, want, yeah. do you want it in speaker view or in group view? Tony? I want it group just for today. I just want to be able to watch all you guys today. Um, we'll start working on the technical stuff next week, but this week I'm just going to keep it simple. Uh, Deanna, you ready? Can you, you see me? I can see you. I can hear you too. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So everybody, you're totally ready. I'm going to go on mute and you guys are going to take it. Who has the first line? Uh, it's like everybody. multiple lines. Okay. Like then everybody I'll count, then I'll count you guys in. Okay. So I'm going to go five, four, three, two, one, one, and I'm going to say action on action. You guys are going to come in. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and action. Peggy, Peggy we're famished. famished. Well, your nephew just started that new job as a dishwasher at that fancy restaurant. Al, how about taking us to lunch? Oh, what the hell, kids? You didn't really want to go to college, did you? Uh -huh. We'd rather eat. Oh, well, if we're going to go, then we better get going, because once we unload your mom, it's harder than hell to squeeze her back in. She kicks like a mule. Hey, Uncle Irwin, are you going to put your head in the salad bar again? Yeah, look are good. You know, Al, you're not good enough to be in our family. Oh, you're right. I could have been up on the morals charge. 999! 1,000! You did it! Wow, you're so macho. You just ate a whole case of sardines. Oh, nice example for the children, Irwin. Why don't you go ahead and show them how to devo on a cow while you're at it? You've always been jealous of me. Oh, yes. I've always secretly wanted to be a beast of burden. Oh, no, no. Let's not spoil our good time. Make up, you two. Lupus. Squid. Oh, uh, that's better. Hey, Mom, are we going to go down to the pony rides to see the look on the horse's face when Uncle Irwin chooses his mount? <laughs> no, no, not today, honey. Since Al paid for lunch with his watch, he's been a bit of a crab apple. Yeah, I think he's mad at us. Huh. Well, don't take it personally. Al always takes a noose with him into the bathroom. 
Oh, no. He's in the bathroom? Mom's in there taking a bath. Oh, well, maybe he won't notice. I'm blind. Very funny, Al. Uh, no, no, really, Peggy. I saw your mother naked. Everything went black. I think my eyes were trying to protect my heart. Now, I'm not going to see a Honda pig. Stop being a baby. It's only historical blindness. It happens to her doctor, okay? It wears off eventually. Wait a second. I think it's starting to come back to me. I, I, I see shapes. I see straw. Oh, Kelly, it's just your horrible bleached blonde hair. Al, we need to talk. Well, I'm broken. I'm blind, Peggy. What is there to talk about? You just haven't been nice to the family. Well, neither has nature. Go bother it. Now, look, you know I don't ask much of you, but I know that you're very limited. So please do whatever you can. Say something to the family. Go home. There. Does that take care of it? That's a little better. Be nice. Go home and drive safely. That's better. Don't you just love our family? No. <laughs> Big round of applause. That was a I great. Know, that, was so funny. that was a great first attempt, guys. Now, Mila, you've never seen this, right? I you loved just, it. I'm sorry. You were losing your mind. I was watching you just go crazy because I knew you hadn't seen this yet. I I just it's just so good. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not saying it. I'm not a coach, but I just, it was so funny. So good job. It's fun to watch, right? So the writers did a really good job with this, and you guys just had to say the lines. You missed a couple cue lines again, but this is a, to be expected for a first put up. But really, for a first time, for us seeing it all together, we tweaked a couple lines, Alicia, because we had to make it make sense, like the straw hair. There's things that didn't make sense because we're not on set. So we got to tweak it, and the kids are writing. This is really good experience to write your own work that works. Um, let's go to Alicia. Any thoughts? Oh, I think you all were very good. Um, this mm -hmm. particular this particular show is not easy to uh, to duplicate or to recreate. So um, I thought it was I thought it was very well done, especially for having two days two days to do it. One. <laughs> one, one, one day to do it. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. And what do you think of Deanna or Peg Bundy? Oh, my God. Great oh, job, Deanna. Fabulous. That was, was her awesome. first, first time on our stage or second time on our stage, but I think it was her first time. She really had a, a wonderful beingness, you know, the, yeah. the presence was there. Good job, Deanna. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to Peter. Thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are, um, I'm understand the differences in comedy. I think Tony would, would, would agree to this. Know what a satire is like, a situation comedy is like, and a farce. This show is incredibly farcical because it deals with sexual innuendo, money, everyone's stupid, blah, blah, blah. So bigger than light, it picked up after he came out, I'm blind, I'm blind. Oh God, I saw your mother naked. <laughs> exactly. That's when it picked up and everybody was connecting. Even if they didn't say the line exactly, that's the thing I would have I would have put on camera. It was slow in the beginning. Now, one more thing is, um, yeah, don't be afraid to be big, and understand your 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 differences in types of comedy because the casting director will, and you may not get the gig, but you get the wrong type. So what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna do it one more time, but we're gonna go bigger, louder, faster in the spirit of fun. That's comedy. Bigger, louder, faster. Bigger, louder, faster. Bigger, louder, faster. Bigger, louder, faster. And Jeff, when you go blind in the bathroom. That's a voiceover that we hear you scream, ah! And then we wonder, what, where did that come from? And then you jump in. And Reagan, make sure you jump on your cue or whoever's missing their cue. Get in there. Get almost on the heels of the line ahead of you. So know your lines. That's key. Inside, outside, backwards, forwards. Master your lines. But again, let's do it. Second one, ride home is the audition, the best audition. Let's nail this on stage for our guests tonight, okay? Thumbs up. Everyone ready? Spirit of fun, guys. Fun, fun, fun. Here we go. From the top, I'm going to count you in. Five, four, three, two, one, and action. Peggy, we're, we're famous. famous. We're famous. Well, your nephew just got this new job as a dishwasher at this fancy restaurant. Al, how about 
you take us out to lunch? Oh, what the hell, kids? You didn't really want to go to college, did you? We'd rather eat. Well, if we're gonna go, then we gotta get going because once we unload your mother, it's harder than hell to squeeze her back in. She kicks like a mule. Hey, Uncle Irwin, are you gonna put your head in the salad bar again? Man, <laughs> if you're good. Yes. You know, Al, you're really not, you don't, you don't fit into our family. You know what, you're right. I've never been up on the morals charge. 999! One thousand! You did it! Wow, you're so macho. You just ate a whole case of sardines. Oh. Huh. Nice example for the children, Erwin. Why don't you go ahead and show them how to debone a cow while you're at it? I've always been jealous of me. Oh, yeah. I've always secretly wanted to be a beast of the burden. Oh, now, now. Come on, let's not spoil our good time. Make up, you two. <sighs> Lufus. Squid. Now that's better. Hey, Mom, are we going to go down to the pony rides to see the look on the horse's face when Uncle Erwin chooses his mount? Oh, no. No, no, not today, honey. After Al paid for lunch with his watch, he's been a bit of a crab apple. I think he's mad at us. <laughs> Oh, well, like, don't take it personally. Al always takes Moose with him into the bathroom. Wait, Al's in the bathroom? Mom's in there taking a bath. Oh, well, maybe you won't notice. Um, uh, I'm blind. <laughs> Very funny, Al. No, no, really, Peggy. I saw your mother naked. Everything went black. And then I, I think my eyes were trying to protect me from my heart. Now I'm not gonna see a Honda pig. Stop being a baby. It's only historical blindness, okay? It'll come back eventually. Wait a second. I, I think it's starting to come back to me. I see, I see shapes. I see straw. Oh, Kelly, it's just your horrible, dried out, bleached blonde hair. I'm sorry. Al, we need to talk. Well, I'm broken, I'm blind, Peggy. What is there to talk about? You haven't been very nice to the family. Neither has nature. Go bother it. Now, you know I don't ask much of you because I know how severely challenged you are, but please do me this favor. Talk to them. Go home. There. Does that settle it? Well, that's a nice start. Just show them you care. Go home. And, and drive safely. Much better. Don't you just love our family? No. All right, you guys. It was it was much better. We're still missing hey a couple of cues. So still good. A couple tiny little tweaks, but I think if we keep tweaking it and tighten up your cue lines, we're going to be really good. But very good, guys. I'm really impressed. Um, Alicia, did it, did you see any adjustments? I did. I saw some adjustments. Um, again, yeah, the picking up the cues. I think Al could even be much bigger, much, but much bigger. I don't know if you, like, like Peter said, I don't know if you're um, very used to uh, farce, but it is, it's huge. It's, it's over the top. I mean, like, imagine that you're on stage, that you're actually performing it for a studio audience or as a play for an audience, those guys, they just, they blow it out the top. And so uh, this in particular is something where I would have done that. I would have really, really given your all for Al because this is how that character is. I love it, and uh, Peter? Well, you know, all the jokes made sense. Everybody had motivation. Everybody knew what they were doing. And, and all the characters were more specific now, you see. So that energy wasn't just line on line on line. If you can't get to this level of acting, then you better do what Tony says and pick up cues fast, fast, fast. But the characters were really, really good this time. And uh, remember, if this is an audition, I'll know in 10 seconds. So you don't want to pick it up where Al's blind. You want it right from the beginning connected and all that. Everything was clipped 
nicely. Thank you so much, guys. I love it, Peter. Thank you, guys. Alicia, thank you for your comments. Um, we're going to try something new this week, okay? So Ella Grace is going to, she wants to be a voiceover actor. She wants to do cartoons. She has a British accent. She does a lot of cool things. Um, Ella, can you do a little of the British uh, Harry Potter for us, just a sample, and then we're going to go into your voiceover. <laughs> Ella, go ahead and pull her voiceover piece. That's the... Um, that's the Ella Grace voiceover scene. So pull that up. Uh, Ella, just give us a little uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, of course. Okay. Have any of you seen a toad? A boy named Neville's lost one. Oh, you're doing magic. Well, let's see it then. Are you sure that's a real spell? It's not very good, is it? I've tried a few simple spells myself, and they've all worked for me. For example, Oculus Repero. That's better, isn't it? Holy crickets! You're Harry Potter! I'm Hermione Granger, and you are... Pleasure. Well, nobody in my family is magic at all, so it's ever such a surprise when I got my letter, but I was so pleased, of course. Now, I expect we'll be arriving soon, so you two better put on your robes. Oh, and by the way, you've got dirt on your nose. Just there. Love it, Ella Grace. Ella Grace. So we decided we're going to try something. Um, you guys like Disney. Some of you like Nickelodeon and Netflix. So we pulled uh, Rapunzel, did we not, Ella? We pulled Rapunzel, and you're going to replace some words that are not there. So she wrote and is going to improv a little scene that we think is really good to showcase her. So Mila. We're going to go to the video, and it's only going to be her in the little box. She, the big box is going to be the show, the cartoon, Rapunzel, right? So I gave you the link. So let's go to stage view. Let's go to share, screen share. There we go. Let's go to full screen. And everybody turn your mics off except for Ella Grace. And Ella is going to attempt to do a voiceover for us right now. Yeah. All right. Uh, you ready, Ella? Yes, I'm ready. Ready, Mila? And mute everybody, action. Oh, person in my closet. Okay, have to get him out. Here we go. What? I got it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, my God. This has never happened before. I mean, not that it's normal. No, no, Pascal, no, 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 And cut, 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 cut. <coughs> All right, big round of applause for our little voiceover exercise. So Ella, what did you think? Um, you know, that was a definitely a first. I liked it though. I really wanted to continue voice acting. I think it was really good. Let's see what uh, Alicia thought. And that was all Ella Grace, nothing else. <laughs> yeah. That was really great, Ella. Really, really great. Yeah, and, and by the way, I enjoyed your Hermione. I really did. I thought that was really sweet and spot on. Thank you. Um, this was spot on too. I mean, you wrote you wrote those lines in. Yeah. It right? was just Obviously, kind of we didn't problem. see her communicating that, but I thought that was very well done and also apropos. So, bravo! Thank you. Oh, that was great, Peter. Any comments on witnessing our voiceover attempt here at the BSA live stage? Ella, you've got so much potential. You need to do a master recording and do everything you know. Every dialect, sing a song, read commercial copy, do poetry, so that when you start auditioning, you have something to show. Instead, uh, uh, so put it all, and, and, and um, you're, you're very talented. And you put your, see, that's why this class is fun for me, because you're reminding us old timers, don't let that inner child die off. <laughs> you know, get that freedom of emotion expression. So thank you very much, Ella. 
Thank you, Peter. Adrian, did, would you like to say anything? Sure. Well done, Ella. It really was. It was charming. And using this technology, um, particularly in a Zoom class, I think has taken it to a new level. Um, and not having had a rehearsal for that before you presented it, I think my only comment would have been to just have a bit more vocal um, pr uh, pr projection. Because everything yeah. was there, um, but it felt in relationship to the, the, the film we were watching, it just felt a little bit back from the image. Yeah. And if you were forceful and presenting forward as a, a subtext, it would have been perfect. Thank you. Uh, do it again. Yes, exactly. Um, Ella, I think it was a successful attempt that we both decided might be fun for class. So I'm so glad you're courageous and tried with us. And let's hear for Ella Grace. So proud of you. Okay, guys, I'm proud of all of you guys. We're going to go into a couple comedic monologues. We've got one from Mila. We've got one from Kendall. Let's go to Kendall now. Are you ready to do your, your monologue, Kendall? Yes. Okay, good. Kendall, we're going to put Mila. We're going to put Kendall on the main stage. Everyone mute, and uh, this is Kendall Monroe. Here, take the stage. Can, okay. Hi, I'm, um, I'm Kathy. Uh, I don't know if you knew that already, but I just wanted to tell you, well, I'm not like a chatty Kathy. I'm like an unchatty Kathy, like the inverse of a chatty Kathy, which I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I am. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I sit behind you in homeroom. You probably didn't know that, but, or maybe you did. I don't know. Did you? Okay, because like sometimes you 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 look back at me, but like I'm not too sure if you're looking back. And then I'm like, oh, is he looking at the girls behind me? Because I mean, you're like really really cute and like, oh, but like I'm not too sure if you're actually looking at me or just not doing anything at all because you're like really unfocused. I just noticed that sometimes. But you know what? I I am gonna stop talking because this is really really dumb and I'm really embarrassing myself right now. So maybe 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 I should go. Do you want me to go? Because I can go. I'm. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a really good idea if I just were to go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Let's hear it for Kendall. That's fun. So, Kendall, stay in. I'm going to do an exercise with you. I want you to add the subtext in your head that you hear, but I want you to say that out loud so we hear it. But I want you to whisper to that invisible subtext voice and only go to one side, wherever that voice is, and make it stop. Turn that voice off in your head. Get in a fight with that voice, but you whisper when you talk to the voice, and then when you're focused on the fourth wall, breaking the fourth wall with us, can you do that little experiment? Yeah. Remember, go big or go home. Okay. All right, this is an experiment. Let's see what she does with that little stage direction and action. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy. Why did you just yell at him? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know if you knew that my name was Kathy. You just told him that my name was Kathy. But, okay, so... Um, I'm like a, not a chatty Kathy, like kind of like the inverse of that, like an unchatty Kathy. Like he really does. He makes me know that he doesn't. He does. Okay. Um, but okay, I actually sit behind you in homeroom. Uh, I don't know if you knew that. Maybe you possibly did. He probably knew that because he takes class like every single day. You're right behind him. Okay. But um, yes, I just wanted to know if you were like looking back at me because sometimes you look back at me and like I kind of notice it. He thinks you're a psychopath now because you're looking back at me. Okay, Um, but yes. Um, so yeah, just cause sometimes you're looking back at the, cause there's a girl behind me. She's like, she's like really pretty. Um, but you might be looking back at her. Now you seem like you're unconfident. Now you seem like you don't like yourself. Okay. Um, but, uh, just, just, just like wondering where you actually, looking, cause you, cause you really get unfocused sometimes. I kind of noticed that in the class. He, um, yeah. So just, I, you know what? Okay. I'm just going to like stop embarrassing myself. You're really embarrassing yourself. Right now. Um, I, I'm going to go. Should I go? Cause I can go. Why are you asking me? I should go. You know what? I'm just going to go. All right. Let's hear it for Kendall. I think you took my direction very well. That is what your subtext in your head, you guys, is doing. And you all need to have subtext going underneath the lines. We don't hear, but you hear. And innuendos that you're presenting on the way you think that word has meaning to you or the character. Okay. Let's go to our guests. Let's uh, talk to Alicia. Thoughts? 
Oh, I, I enjoyed it um, both both times actually. Both pegs I thought were were very good. Um, I I felt like the second time I was a little less connected to her, to be honest. The first time I was a little more connected to her. And so kind of interesting. Um, you you can give a little bit more on one side, but then sometimes it can take away. So so you have to look at a balance. You have to really reach a balance and know what your balance is. And the way that you can do that is a, a little more character study. Um, and you can watch people in real life because in real life, they really do do that. What you just did, they do that. So watch people learn, establish that. And, and, um, and with a little more character study, I'm sure you'll find your balance. Thank you, Alicia. Adrian, any comments? Yeah, I'll second what Alicia just said. Um, and what you might be able to try, I mean, I prefer the first take myself, but I liked what came across in the, the subtext version where she was talking to the conscience. Um, it would be interesting if she was able, if you were able to do the same thing, but to camera without turning away, but use inflection in your voice, um, where you can be big and then go quiet to yourself and then mutter to yourself and then come back out again. So we get this, like Tony was suggesting, getting this two dimensional, uh, the two voice character going. So we know it's not a monologue, that it is thought, being spoken thought and response. So I, I think, you know, with it, maybe just trying another way, um, I think you may get there. But I, I take Alicia's comments to heart because I think they were spot on. Thank yes. you, Adrian. And uh, Peter. When I teach my monologue workshop, I tell actors the very first thing out of my mouth is there is no such thing as a monologue. Mm -hmm. If you see cartoons, you see the devil on one shoulder, the angel on the other. We, if once we realize that we are having a conversation with ourselves, then it becomes more active, okay? And the subtext did that because you're gonna to respond to how people look at you. You're gonna respond after they say something. That's called the inner monologue. We all have an inner monologue and Tony was great to bring that up. Study that because that fills in the gaps. That makes your character three dimensional. You're not just focused on what you're saying, but you're focused on, Am I going to say this right? Should I say it now? What are they going to say? Blah, blah. And, and, and that's a great exercise you gave her. For some reason, I connected more with the second. Because it gave me depth. It gave me timing. It gave me a character. More than just her saying lines to somebody else. She was deciding. Always deciding. They say Hamlet is not active. Bull. He's always deciding. What am I going to do? Thank you, uh, Kendall. Thank you, Peter. Kendall, that was great. I know the hard work that you put into that. I know it's... You're, you are a heavy dramatic actress. I know that's your forte. I know you're good at comedy and even great at comedy. But when you present your drama, it's clear as day. You are so talented in both. But the drama that you bring at such a young age, you're 15, I think. Yeah. The, the connection that a 15-year-old can bring to the stage, it's just powerful. And your comedy is yeah. good, if not great. But y yeah, you're, you're going to win Academy Awards. You really are. Just st stick with it. I think you're really talented. As Tony, I, she reminds oh, me of Stalker Channing. She reminds me of Stalker Channing. Yeah, Stalker, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, some oh. of the greatest comedic actors are also, you know, came from drama. Yes. You know, look at Lucy. Robin Ball. Williams. Mm -hmm. yeah. Robin Williams. Yep. Yeah. And Lucy Ball, of course, was a dancer. That's and right. then became. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, guys, we've got one more. Uh, scheduled monologue and then we're going to do some pieces that I know you guys want to share with our guests okay so our next scheduled monologue is Mila Are you ready Mila um yeah honestly I walked into doing this and I was like okay I'm gonna do a comedic monologue right then I started practicing it and I was realizing yeah this isn't funny at all <laughs> um and it's I don't know if it's considered a drama but I would say it's you'll just see it so Exactly. And you, you always approach comedy real, honest, the same yes. way. So you pick up your yes. lines faster in comedy. 
it's exaggerated, just like caricatures at a theme park when they draw the nose. If you have a big nose, you have a bigger nose. If you have big ears, you have bigger ears. If you're doing comedy, it's bigger, but it's still yeah. based on truth, exaggerated truth. Don't ever lose the sight. It's always truth. Yeah. So approach it dramatically as well. Okay. So okay. whatever it is, it is what it is, and you're going to bring honesty and truth to it. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let's give you. You're the director. You're the stage director. Give yourself the stage. Okay. <laughs> we'll mute. All right. Okay. Okay. This time, it's gonna work. I'm gonna take out the whole lot of models in the finale. You're gonna help me, right? Water balloons full of blood. Water balloons full of blood. I'm a genius. You know, okay, the thing is, Donatella wouldn't club a baby seal. I mean, she doesn't have the stomach for it. I bet she doesn't even cook her own meat for dinner. She, I bet she thinks that veal is a vegetable. But then, but then she'll go out and, and wear animal skin to just to get a compliment. Hypocrite. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't see the blood she's shedding. All of the blood. Who gave us, us, the right to kill for fashion? People are so disgusting. You know, what if I took your baby and, and skinned it and made it into a coat? How would you feel? See, you don't even think about it. You, you just, we have this perspective and we're so self-absorbed in the way we look, so in love with ourselves that we'd kill a furry little animal just to get a compliment. Social survival, survival of the fittest. And if you want to take down a fashionista, you've got to hit him where it hurts. Public humiliation. That's the name of the game. All right, big round of applause. Now, how you could have ever thought that was comedy is beyond me because I don't see anywhere in there that I could find any of that tragic okay. commentary funny. But I searched on Google comedic, mon you, comedic monologues for teens yeah, <laughs> and I came up. So. That's fair, but you did the work and saw it's heavy drama. You do have a comedic monologue, though. The one that I make you go, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, I do. Can you do, can you do the oh, my God monologue? Oh, that one. Um, yeah, I can do that. Okay. So we added, just so the, the people watching, we added oh, my God after every single line. That's not the monologue. The monologue is anything but oh, my God. But I ask her to say, oh, my God, every single line, without exception, she must say, oh, my God, even at the end. So that's a challenge I'm giving you because I want you to stay in and not think about your lines. I want you to, I want you to be engaged in your activity and your activity is, oh my God. Okay. Okay. This is an experiment. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Yeah. Ready. Here we go. And this, oh my God. I've done this one in a minute, so we'll see. Oh my God. Okay. Speak your ears. There we go. All right. So don't you say three times, four times. Oh my God. 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 I'm going to do this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Action. Oh my God, I'm gonna forgive you. Oh my God, because I'm on a lot of pain medication right now. Oh my God, you know I died for 15 seconds, right? Oh my God, spoiler alert. Heaven looks like a really nice hotel in Miami. Oh my God, when I woke up in the street, all I could see was my mom's face and like <laughs> Gretchen's big, ugly face looking down at me. Oh my God, they were so like surprised. Oh my God, not even sad, just like surprised that I could be bleeding. Oh my God, like they forgot I was a human person. And oh my God, I've like been a human person like this whole time. Oh my God, you know, I've been harsh, honestly. And oh my God, people say I'm a bitch, right? Oh my God, but you know what they would have named me? You know what they were gonna name me if I was a boy? Reginald. Oh my God. So honestly, I'd rather be a bitch. Oh my God. <laughs> God, big round of applause. Okay, so what's step 16, Mila? Forget about it. I did not forget anything. I totally thought about it. No, it's okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, now set, because I gave you an exercise. Now I'm going to take all the restraints off of you, and you're going to do the monologue without the oh my God as it was written, and it's still going to be there. The subtext is not, you can't get rid of it. It's like putting salt in water. You can't take it out. You put it in, it's not going to go out. Trust that you did the work. Trust. And just say the lines. Okay. You ready? No, oh my gods. Okay. And okay. here we go. Action. Oh shoot, hold on. I clicked the wrong button. There we go. 
I'm going to forgive you because I'm on a lot of pain medication right now. You know, I died for 15 seconds, right? You know, spoiler alert, heaven looks like a really nice hotel in Miami. When I woke up in the street, all I could see was like my mom's face and, and Gretchen's big face looking down at me. <laughs> they were so surprised. Not even sad, just like surprised that I could be bleeding. <laughs> like They forgot I was a human person. And I've actually, I've actually been a human person this entire time. I know I was harsh and people say that I'm a bitch, but you know what they were going to name me if I was a boy? Reginald. Yeah, that's what my mom was going to name me if I were a boy. So honestly, <laughs> I'd rather be a bitch. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. We stretch, we stretch, we try things that are unconventional, things that don't make sense. But in that, you get rid of the self-talk. Me, oh my God, think about me, me. I'm thinking about me, me, me. What are they thinking of me, me, me? Oh, it's all about me. Oh, what do they think of me, me, me? Guess what? They're doing the same thing. They're thinking about me, me. They're not thinking about you, you. So <laughs> your self-talk is your enemy. Mm -hmm. your, the more work you do, the better you are every single week. You're one of the best actors I know. Thank you for taking my little direction experiment. Okay, let's go to Adrian Carr. Uh, going back to the first monologue, actually, I thought it was very hysterical. I think you could play it with sarcasm, actually, you know, as a dark comedy so did Peter. Uh, who, who doesn't really, you know, think of things yeah. that way. But you could twist it at the very yeah, end. Could, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the very end, when you get serious about how you can um, screw somebody up by... Uh, mm -hmm. I see what you're going saying. After them. I think that would be a great shift. You uh -huh. know, you're making it this dark, sarcastic remark that you actually enjoy seeing skinned animals. But yeah, no, knowing that's that you it. don't, and then twist it at the end and hit it home really hard, then we know that all that was bullshit before. You right. really meant what you were saying, mm -hmm. that it was you know, disgusting. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Yeah, thank you. And, and you need to watch Adrian's Blood Makes Noise and you'll get where his head <laughs> at. You gotta remember who you're talking to. And Peter's about as, as sadistic as Adrian is. And I think even Alicia Brooks might be on the same page as you guys. So you had a good audience today, Mila. Peter, what are your comments? We just did Married with Children. <laughs> if you read 90% of those scripts, they're disgusting. They talk about all kinds of titty bars. They talk about getting drunk they, and they're hilarious. It's because you, the reason it didn't work for Tony is because you didn't take the risk as an actress to have fun with this and say, ugh, oh, they, they skin these alive, oh, and they make it bloody. Just for a damn little comedy. Mm. Can you believe that stuff? And if you're truth about it, as a matter of fact, if you put part of the personality in the second one, in the first one, it would have been hilarious. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't think so, yeah Mary. Like yeah, yeah. Trust yourself, uh, Mila. Don't let the actress get in the way of the character. Mm -hmm. Wise words, on. wise words. And Alicia, I know you think the way Adrian and Peter does. I, I just know you do. I do, I do. And, and I think partially due to, um, I don't think she believed it. Right. You know? And right. I think part it, from the first monologue to uh, the third monologue, which was the, the same, uh, the second and the third were the same. I didn't see that you believed it. You know, this is the thing is like, part one, maybe even part zero is understanding what is being said. If you understand what is being said, then you can look at the subtext after that and what is being not said. And then you can go, aha, okay, what emotion can I put into that? Because we really, what you really want to say is the subtext, you know, as Kendall was doing, but what you're, what you're actually saying is what you're allowing yourself to say, right? So, but you have to believe it. As an actor, you have to believe what you're saying. And um, even if you're a character that doesn't believe what, what you're saying, you know, if that's the character, you have to make it look like you believe what you're saying. 
so that everybody else has the benefit of like, you know, taking on that and, and going, wow, is she really saying, is she really saying that? Is that what she's, that's what she's saying? Wow. You know, so that first one, I, I also, yeah, I agreed uh, with Peter and Adrian. I thought it could have been played very differently um, to produce some comedy, some real dark comedy. I, I'm one of these comedians that loves dark comedy. So that could have been played differently, but I didn't see you believe it. And I also saw what I felt like I saw was you kind of going in and out, you know, you were the character and then you were Mila. Mm. I could see that. And you don't want the director, the casting director to see you going in and out of your role. But that's what I was seeing. I was seeing you be Mila and then I was seeing you be the character. So you have to really commit to it and hold on to it. Mm. Well, thank, thank you, you Lisa. Comfortable. And Mila, with all this being said, it was really good to even have us give you feedback. You understand the difference? Yeah. You won't get this oh, feedback totally. if you're not so close that we want perfection. That's how close you were that we want to give you feedback. Oh, Sometimes yeah. when you see, and you all know what I'm speaking of, when you see a new, new, new actor, you're not gonna critique them. You're just happy they had the courage to get on stage. So I want you guys to understand, criticism means we love it. We're gonna give you our value time that we can't ever get back for the rest of our life. That's the one precious commodity we can't ever get back. We're gonna give it to you because you did something to us. Yes, Adrian. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see it again next week. Um, Cause I, I think because you had doubts yourself as to whether it was comedy or drama mm. and um, taking Alicia's comments, I, I think that's where you were dropping in and out because you weren't sure if it was comedy or drama yourself. And you were struggling with trying to keep it dramatic but at the back of your mind, because it's a comedy monologue, I, I think there's a subconscious voice there going, well, this should, be, should have been a comedy, but I can't make it work. Mm -hmm. But I, I think you could do it next week and knock it out of the park. I do too. You up for that, Mila? Yeah, thank you. All right, let's give Mila a big round of applause. You guys all have courage of a lion to do what you're doing. Yes, Kendall. Ooh. Did I do my dramatic monologue? I was going to ask if you were prepared and wanted to do it. Can I have like 30 seconds? Like, play you quickly? can. I'm going to do a quick little game with the kids just to show Alicia what we do in between. Um, this is like my hee-haw laugh-in moment. Remember laugh-in with Goldie Hawn and they would open the door and they would say something and they would shut the door? This is our little Zoom box, Zoom room. So you guys turn your mics on, all the students and, and Jeff as well, turn your mics on and we are gonna play, um, I'm having the best day ever. Oh, you think that's good? This, and then you top me. This is called topping. Everyone ready? All right, Reese, I hope you can play. I don't know if you're still with us. Here we go. Oh my God, I'm having such a great day. I got Alicia Brooks to watch you guys. You have no idea. She is a director and writer. I'm so honored she's watching you guys. Anybody have a, something better than that? You think that's good? I didn't have to wear some socks. Oh my God, Jocelyn, what do you think? You think that's good? I got to sneak into Disneyland. Oh my God, Ethan, what do you think? You think that's good? I got 10 free tacos. Oh my God, hold in, let's pick up the pace, hold in. Oh my gosh, you think that's good? I got 14 free tacos. Oh my God, Reagan. You think that's good? I got four. I got, I got free tacos for the rest of the year. Oh my God, Mila, you're muted. Mila, uh, what, what do you think? Reese, you're muted, what do you think? Kendall's re preparing. Ethan, better day than that? Uh, you think that's good? I got a lucky jackpot for a million dollars. Oh my God, Kelsey, you're muted. Deanna, you're muted. Jeff, what do you think? I think that's good. I'm not muted. <laughs> Kelsey. You, th you think that's good? I thought I was going to do a monologue today. Peter, you are. Peter. Ha, you think that's good? I got to meet Alicia and see Adrian. Hold it. Okay, guys, 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 you think that's good? Well, I got the Jack in the Box mini tacos. And let oh me my just God, say, let's go. you think that's weird? Hold it. You think that's weird? You think, you know what's weird? The mini tacos are so small and mini. Kelsey, I'm going to put you on the spot. Weird. You think that's you weird? You think that's weird? I just ate some worms and I didn't even know they were in my Starbucks. Now we're talking. Jocelyn, let's get weird. You think that's weird? I had worms in my sandwich. Let's get weirder. We have the right guess for that. Jeff. 
think that's where the Travis Scott burger and McDonald's has my toenails in it. Ethan. I think that's weird. I saw a three-headed dragon talk to me. Reagan. I think that's weird. I have a, I have a sixth toe. Uh, Mila, I'm going to go to you, Deanna. Mila. Uh, you think that's weird? I did a comedic monologue as a drama. Deanna, just say something weird. Just say something weird. Uh, turn your mic on. You think that's weird? You think that's weird? I just wore really big hair for a scene, and I don't know. You fell you in the think... toilet. Peter. <laughs> you think that's weird? I'm half Italian, half Puerto Rican, so I'm sort of Rican. Sort of Rican. <laughs> Hold it. Bring us home. Hold it. Bring us home. You think that's weird? I'm a spineless dinosaur. All right, boom. That's our laughing moment. Big round of applause, everybody. The purpose of this exercise is to pick up the pace in your cue lines. You got to listen, and then you got to know when to go. You got to feel a rhythm because you don't know the lines. So you got to feel. So it's our rhythm. It's our dance. And so I do that exercise to get you guys to pick up your pace. Uh, Kendall, are you ready? Kendall, Kendall. Yes? Okay. Let's give Kendall the stage. This is a very, very heavy monologue. Um, let's give her the stage and uh, let's mute. Here, let me get the stage. Slide me. Adrian. You don't have any growing left. That's a sad reality. That is what money and power buy you. So why me? random girl that stumbled into your life the night of the party. Can't you just forget I ever existed? There is nothing left for you to take. I've been taken off. Okay, stay in character. Any any uh, directional notes from uh, Alicia? Stay in character. Um, I I think that was a really good approach. I like her use. I actually really like her use of this, you know, ring, and it, it's almost like she's holding on to it for dear life. You know, like this is. It, it, it's an embodiment of what she knows she's losing. So I thought that was, I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. Adrian, any comments? Yeah. Um, brilliant work, Kendall. Uh, as, a, as a director uh, and having worked in post-production a lot, be very careful of being so overwrought that the words aren't coming out clearly they're getting swallowed back in the back of your throat. It was very hard because I've heard the, the piece and I, I was able to sort of just, I had to strain to see, to hear what you were saying. I got it, but I had to put more effort in than I would if I was an audience member sitting at home, just watching it on TV or in a cinema. Um, diction and clarity and projection even when you're so internalized, still has to come out. A microphone will help pick up a lot, but when it's swallowed at the back of the throat because you're so in the moment, it, it, um, it'll get lost. And if you have music 
playing over the top of it or uh, a machine playing in the background with the character there, you'd just be swallowed up. But brilliant performance. Thank you, Adrian. Peter. Yeah, you had the character well. And um, you have to understand, it's like combat. You have to be very relaxed to do combat or you'll break a limb. You have to be relaxed in your vocal instrument in order for people to hear you. In theater, we call it a stage whisper. You're whispering, but the back row hears you. So you have to improve your articulation, move everything forward. And I, I would like to see something. Humor me on this, Kendall, because I think you're brilliant. Have the ring on and figure out when you want to take it off and get rid of it. Turn it into an action. Feel you getting rid of that ring with it on first. I don't know why, but if he, that just, that hit my, that struck me. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. All right, Kendall, I'm going to have you break character now. I wanted you to stay in character, but let's hear for Kendall. She stayed in character. You did really, really good. <clears throat> what's, what's your favorite situation, your favorite food, your favorite location? Tell me. This is how I make sure all my students come out of the character. I don't want you to stay in heavy drama. I don't want you being depressed. I don't want anything crazy at your teenage years to influence how it's already a dark world we live in. So tell me something happy. Talk to me. Oh, um, okay. Well, I was going to talk about my cat, but she doesn't like me, so she left. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. Um, I don't know. What, what do I love? I love a lot of things in life. I just think love about food. Watch her lighten up when she thinks about food. I know what you, you like shoes. Let's talk about your shoes. You're a sneakerhead. Yeah. Look at her, watch her light up. Tell me about shoes. Um, oh, I'm getting these, um, the Air Jordan Blue Chills. And I'm like really excited about that because I've been wanting those forever and now I'm going to get them. Yeah. And now, and, and did you notice a different feeling when you started talking about shoes? You can say you're back, but we as directors and producers, et cetera, can see when you're not. So just so as your coach, I really want you to know the difference between really back and just saying you're back. Okay. So do the exercise when you're done and you're ready to walk off set. Don't stay, some actors stay in it because they're crazy method actors. If that's <laughs> how you want to approach it, I, as your coach, don't do it now. You're not there yet to stay in it for a whole week or a month. You're not up for an Academy Award. You're not getting millions of dollars. I don't subscribe to it. I am a method coach, but I don't subscribe to that for people at your age right now. So come out of it. Don't live in it, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, directors, uh, producers, any, any comments on uh, method acting, your approach as a director with method actors? Alicia? Think, um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I have thought about this for years, not on end, but, you know, I, I, as an actor and the, the approach, I think that you can, just as you said, you know, jump in and out of it. And I think as I mentioned before, you know, if you're going to be that actor or be that character, be that character. And then, you know, it called cut, you're yourself, you know, and I think that we as human beings have the ability to do that over and over and over again. I mean, when you get in a fight with your sister or your brother, you're not yourself. But the moment your mom comes with ice cream, it's like, oh, I love you and everything is hunky-dory and it's all fine again. Why does that happen? That happens because we are able to occupy that personality and that emotion at the time. You know, whatever we are encountering, those things can move us up and down that emotional scale. And, um, you know, um, you like I have parents, but I could potentially, you know, play and play a character who's an orphan or who lost their mom or lost their dad, and I can cry on cue for that. But it is a a beingness. We assume a beingness for a certain amount of time, and then we come out of that, and we are ourselves. And and it's just it's just a um, you know it's just an exercise. You just do it over and over and over again till you can just do it like this. 
and you don't have to live in it because there's no reason why you should have to live in it. It's a beautiful world out there with lots of crazy, wild, wonderful things as well. I mean, I know that there's what, crazy stuff going on, but actually that's a minuscule amount. It's only that it's because it's in our face right now that we're seeing it. We feel like, oh, we're inundated with all this negativity, but it's not true. It is not true. There's a massive amount of positive, wonderful, beautiful, incredible things happening out there. So we don't have to live in, in the negativity. We can jump in and out per character. Thank you. I appreciate it, Alicia. So we have one more method scene. I know Kelsey, Kelsey's a method actress. Are you doing something heavy or light tonight? I am doing a comedic monologue tonight. Oh. Oh, I love it. We're used to seeing heavy drama for Kelsey. So um, I guess we'll give you the stage and we'll, we'll communicate to you afterwards. Okay. So uh, Mila, if you could give her the stage, everyone mute. Kelsey Lee. Oh my God. Are you honestly and truly going to prom with Katrina DeVore? Oh, he had just told me you were going with her. Oh, I see. Bet your mom's pretty stoked you're not taking me. Why? You know, it's... No, 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 Bleaker. No, no, no. I'm not mad. No, I'm in a fucking great mood. Despite the fact that I'm in a fat suit that I can't take off. Despite the fact that... Every single person is making fun of me behind my back. And despite the fact that your little girlfriend gave me the stink eye in art class yesterday. No, no, that's fine. Go ahead. Take Katrina. You know, Soupy sails the problem with you. I could think of so many, so many more things that would be so much more cooler and fun than going to prom with you. <laughs> like I could, uh, I could promise my feet. Or, or I could go to Brim's Dumb Unitarian Church. Or I could get hit by a 10-ton truck filled with hot garbage juice. All of these things would be so much more fun than going to prom with you. <laughs> no, that's fine, Bleaker. Go ahead, take Katrina to Deuce Packer prom with you. I'm sure you two have a real bitch in time together. No, that's fine. Oh! Really? Why? Because I got bored one night and I had sex with you and I like didn't didn't like marry you. <laughs> oh, that's fine, Bleaker. I still have your virginity. <laughs> no, that's fine. Go take go 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 take her to prom. At least you don't have to hide the evidence under your sweater. I'm a planet. Katrina, I think I'm going to go pay her a visit. Kelsey Lee, that's what I'm talking about. So Kelsey had a private class with me, and we discussed oh. some ways to approach this, and we thought making a lot of innuendos, a lot of death threats via the knife, and we tried to get rid of the F-bomb. We weren't able to remove the F-bomb. I'm so we, sorry it came we, out. We, we did try to get rid of it. We apologize to parents that are listening, but it is a late night show with Kelsey Lee. Uh, but Kelsey, amazing performance. I mean, I was just blown away. I've seen it and I worked with you, but I think you really brought it today. I really do. So let's go to Adrian Carr and see his thoughts. Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey Lee. Now I understand why he didn't take you to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> and the girlfriends would be very nervous too. You'd give Ben Close a run for her money. Yeah. Uh, Glenn Close. I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. Watch, uh, what is the movie? Michael Douglas, uh, Fatal Attraction. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. oh, that's not Glenn Close. That's not Glenn Close. Uh, Glenn Close, sorry. No, it's not Glenn Close. Sharon Stone? No, yes, Glenn, Sharon Stone. Glenn, no, 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 Glenn Close. In the first one. And Michael Douglas. Oh, when she dies in the tub We're at the end, yes. about yes. the rabbit. Yes, exactly. Yep. 
Um, so uh, Kelsey Lee, check that out. And you, you immediately brought those feelings back up about uh, her character. And um, maybe licking the knife once would have been enough. I don't know the second time, it may have just been a bit too much. Um, but definitely implied threat all the way. I mean, psycho bitch, you nailed it. <laughs> she was, she, uh, yeah. Thank you. Totally, totally different approach. And <laughs> I, I think it was the best version yet. Oh, you're just saying that because you're scared of her. <laughs> you were amazing, Kelsey. That was so great. Let's go to Peter and then Alicia. Thoughts, Peter? <laughs> well, you know, Hitchcock loved blondes. Yeah, so if yeah. you saw that, Hitchcock would have put you in a film. Um, I, I was saying, what the F is going on? <laughs> but notice what plastic material does. You see a monologue, you give an actor a pen or a book, whatever. Now he's got something he has to do. Very good, Tony. Very good. And you were focused. Kelsey, not on just you, but on something external. And that's what human beings do. We're subjective, not objective. We're not directing ourselves. That was a nice job. You had hills and valleys. You were scary as hell. Adrian <laughs> nailed it. I said, no wonder the dude didn't want to take you. Jeez. <laughs> now, before we forget this, this is very important. The uh, scene before this, there's a difference between emotion and emotionalism. A method actor and a methody actor. And when you're on a set, 80 people in a union getting paid buco bucks per hour, you cannot take forever creating character. You cannot take forever preparing. You create triggers at home and you bounce in and out just like a child does when he plays cowboys and Indians. And mom says, come on in for dinner. They table it. Then they come back and they can get right back into it. Acting is sometimes very simple. Method is getting rid of blocks, so you can't be 100% creative. Thank you. That was thank good, Kelsey. You, was thank, thank you. Uh, Alicia. So I did have a question, and uh, did she first, uh, before your, your coaching the last time, did she do this straight before? Or how, did, how was it performed before? Yeah. Yeah, pretty. I mean, she. I don't know if I wanted to show you, but yeah, we. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a night and day performance by choices. Uh -huh. We did, we took more time in backstory and yeah. choices, and we went down the dark road, and we chose okay. to experiment, and then we added the prop, and then okay. she chose to add the pillow and do that, and, and but she brought a lot of this herself. I just gave her the freedom to to take it further, and Kelsey okay. can go far. I'm like, go there, Kelsey. She's like, really? I'm like, go there. And she went. That can be scary. Absolutely. That was really well done, Kelsey. I, I want to second what uh, Peter said, you know, um, about uh, going in and out. And then um, I would just add that, you know, there's sometimes when you're, when you're acting, you want to hit a point and then not jump to the next point right away. So I know with monologues, it feels like there's, there's an urge to get to the next thing, especially if, you know, you're, you're trying to stay in character and you want to, you want to be finished, you know, but we don't want to do that. I want you to like hit the point and give it, give it some time to sink in, you know, I mean, if, especially if you're talking to, you know, this guy who's like, what if he left you at the altar, right? Be pregnant and you know you would be slamming those points home and waiting for a response that's what you would be doing you'd be waiting for that response and every response is not good enough so you would be rising your you know your anger it, it starts like oh you're going to take her to the prom i see okay hmm. Okay, all right, all right, you know, and then the next thing, like really, you're making that point, and then comes that next point, and it's an elevation, and it's an elevation of emotion until you get to that final elevation where you're like, huh, you know what, there she is, let me just go say hello, you know what I mean, so, so really just 
with each point that you're trying to make, let it sink in mm -hmm. for that for that person, okay? Perfect, perfect, guys. Again, I just want to give you a big round of applause, Kelsey. I think that was exceptional. I'm really proud of your work. Each week, you keep topping yourself. So I know, um, did did Reagan and Jeff, do you guys have a, a scene, or did I miss any scenes? I know Jocelyn is going to do a monologue, right, Jocelyn? I'm reading the comments right now. So you guys, if you have any notes, put them in the comments. But me, and, I, me and Jeffrey have a scene, but we plan on doing it next week. Okay, perfect, perfect. We're running out of time as well. So, um, one joke real quick. Uh, I just birthed a peacock. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> NBC, baby. Um, so, you can see why you're upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have time for one more uh, guests. Are you guys okay if we do one more monologue? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. We appreciate your time. So, all right. Um, real quick, I need to sneak out because I got one more commitment, but thank you all so much. Good job, um, Kelsey. Thank you, Kelsey. Bye. Thank you all. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Um, thank you, Kelsey. And if Deanna, if you have to jump to, you're more than welcome to. Let's uh, let's go to Jocelyn. And then is, is your brother doing a monologue as well? Yes. Okay. And you guys have worked on it? I haven't had any privates with you, so I don't know. If yes. You... I'm going to do the one I did from the, the week before last. And you've worked on it? So... Yes. Okay, and same thing, Ethan, you've worked on your stuff? I just haven't had any time with you guys. Yeah, I'm working on mine. Okay, good, good. And you have it memorized now? Everyone has their stuff memorized? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the difference between memorized and cold reading is night and day, because then we can give you direction if it's memorized. If it's cold reading, there's only so much we can do. So the, the goal is to have it memorized, but I don't want you not to put work up. So I, even if it's not memorized, put work up, but try to have it memorized. I know you guys are all in school. You guys are all really busy. And I appreciate you guys being here every Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Can I interject um, something, Tony? Yes, please. With, with the cold reading, here's what you guys want to think with. Uh, and I said this before, but I'm just going to emphasize it here. Is just, you look at it, you're going to understand it, and you're going to make it your own. This is, you know, a lot of your auditions, you're not going to get the sides beforehand. Sometimes you walk in and you get those sides. So I know it's a different world with Zoom. You're able to, um, to make your videos. So you can do things multiple times before you submit your videos. But what I really want you guys to understand is take that, make it your own. Even from that first time, if you can do it from that first time, boy, you're gonna feel so amazing just in your own skin You're, you are going to feel amazing and and you should so just keep that in mind okay guys all right let's give jocelyn the stage everyone mute i'll be honest andy if brian came walking up to you in the hall on monday what would you do i mean come on you're a jock i know exactly what you would do You'd say hi to him, and then when he walked off, you'd cut him all up up to your friends just so that you think they di you didn't like him. Because I'm telling the truth, that makes me a bitch? Okay. What about you, you hypocrite? Why don't you take Allison to one of your heavy metal vomit parties? Or take Brian out to the parking lot at lunch to get high? What about Andy? For that matter, what about me? What would your friends say if they saw us walking down the hall together? They'd laugh their asses off. And then you'd probably tell them you were doing it with me just so they forgive you for being seen with me. Oh, really? I hate you. All right, big round of applause for Jocelyn. Um, real quick, we're going to get a couple comments. We're going to do a couple lines to see if you take direction. So let's go to Alicia. If she was in a casting office and you wanted to see if she took direction, could you make her go to the left or to the right? What would you What would you ask her to do? Um, I would, I would actually have her play it a little different, you know, um, because she's she's playing it straight, you know, as as we would. But why why don't add a little sarcasm? you know, a little bit more sarcasm because uh, I didn't see it enough. You know, I felt like it was straight. She was just trying to make a, a, a point to the guy. Um, but I'd almost add that 
you know, just to, to feel a little more um, connected to that character. Sarcasm. Perfect. Uh, Peter. Well, Alicia didn't have the benefit of seeing Jocelyn last time. And I, I mentioned, Jocelyn, you're such a nice lady. You're, 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 you're very courteous. You're very accommodating. I need you to be more edgy. I need you to be more, more, more risk-taking. And I saw that today. She wasn't the super nice girl she was before. She was very direct. She was very strong. I think I would have liked to have seen her topping when she made that list. What if it was him? What if it was her? What if it was that guy? What if it was me? Then you see the levels. But yeah, she has changed a lot. Jocelyn, you're going in the right direction. Keep taking those risks. Be strong. Because you're going to walk in nice. And then when you do something strong, casting director is automatically going to see your range. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank, okay, you, thank you so much. Adrian Carr. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I'll take Alicia's comments and Peter's add, add to the mix. What nationality are you? Puerto Rican and Colombian. Okay. Now, do you speak um, Puerto Rican? No. Okay. Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> um, sometimes I, if I have actors who, if English isn't their first language, I'll have them actually repeat the scene in their own language because they come with the fire that they know yeah. how to how to present themselves but obviously not in this case but that that's an exercise i sometimes do i'll say oh just play the scene in your own language the way you would say it and there's a whole different level of energy and performance and subtext that comes out and then say okay now let's go back and do it in english with that same understanding um but um, in but given that um, you don't speak uh, Latin, then I would um, listen to Alicia and Peter and take their comments on board because I have the same same issues. You're heading in the right direction, but you've got the ability and the talent to go so much further with it. And okay. maybe having a private with Tony at some point um, could help focus and rein in some of those moments for you. Okay, thank you. Well, overall, very good. We're seeing growth. You're headed in the right direction. Uh, she's a fabulous singer, by the way. A lot, most of these kids, I think almost all these kids are singers as well after Peter's heart. But um, a lot of times we play, if you watch some of the old shows, we, we have them sing as well. We're just out of time today. Um, Kendall, we talked today and or yesterday in our class about you actually speaking Spanish so we could send you over to Telemundo for an audition. Um, were you yeah. able to translate your monologue into Spanish? I haven't yet. Do you speak Spanish? I do. Are you fluent? Si. Do you speak Spanish, Peter? Yes, she should do it right now without thinking about it. Just do it in why Spanish. Don't you, why don't you improv in Spanish right now, the two of you. You and Peter improv in Spanish. You don't have to do the monologue. Okay. Just, just speak Spanish to each other. Okay. Ask him how bueno, muchacha, ¿por, ¿por qué estás triste? No soy triste, es que estoy bien. <laughs> No, me parece que algo te molesta. Estás moviendo el cabello, estás mirando al lado, no me estás mirando los ojos. ¿Qué te pasa? No, estoy bien. Solo es que cuando, cuando llora, es que mi cara está roja. Sí. Sí. Bueno, pero tú sabes, soy tu amigo. Te voy a ayudar si tienes problemas, ¿ok? Ay, gracias. Ah, con todo mi corazón. Está bien. Tu español es muy bien, ¿no? Eh, ¿Qué onda es? Eh. Me encanta, me encanta. The, Sp the Spanish word for no is no, but with an accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone says it to me. It's like, don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> That's I'm okay. Uh -huh. My face is just red. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see how vulnerable she was and how real she was in that yeah, moment? Because great. she really yeah. had to pay attention. That's mm -hmm. the thing, guys. If you get too good with your lines, technically, mm -hmm. you're not listening anymore. You're waiting for your turn. 
Okay, but uh, Mila speaks Spanish too. I know she does. <laughs> See, you, but... you want to practice some Spanish real quick, Mila? Because we're going to do some Telemundo stuff here. Oh, yeah, Mila, do it. Oh, ask your questions, Kendall. Mila, yep. Mila yep, you're ready, Kendall, not me. Oh. Um, vas a preguntar, can, did I, I just, mm, mm, mm. no sé, uh, uh, you're thinking, uh, we don't think, why don't we, why don't we give them a scene, two oh. sisters fighting over a boy, there, there you go, oh, oh no. hit home, didn't it, okay, go, action, <laughs> It's too real to him. I don't even know how I would do that in English. <laughs> I don't, me neither. <laughs> so how am I supposed to do it in Spanish? All right. All right, you guys. This exercise for next week. I want the two of you to practice your okay, Spanish. We'll practice, we'll, we'll practice. E okay, we'll practice. Okay, we'll practice fighting in Spanish. Yes. Vamos a practicar, okay? Yes. And okay, we, will do okay. a, we will do a telenovela next week on this stage, okay? <laughs> I challenge you. I challenge you guys to challenge yourself. Because there's a lot of Spanish work right now. A lot. And there's no reason if you can do it, you shouldn't be at least auditioning for it. Tony, Tony. Yes, yes sir. My dad, my dad was a floor manager and a cameraman for Telemundo 30 years ago when it was a small station in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. People don't remember that it started out as a Puerto Rican station. Now it's this big conglomerate. I used to go there all the time to watch all the Fanny All-Stars, Tito Puente. I saw Celia Cruz there. I mean, it's got a lot of richness to it, that uh, the history of it. Exactly. If you guys sing, you need to showcase it. If you dance, oh. if you tell jokes, anything you're good at, you need to showcase it. Yes, Reagan. Uh, I was going to say, I took Spanish for two years, and the only word I remember is aroha, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to pra practice, practice. Okay, guys, we've got one more monologue. If I'm correct, everyone else is complete. You've done your showcasing for tonight. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Ethan's monologue here. We're going to do a couple comments on that, and then we're going to talk to our guests and thank them for being here, okay? So stick around for the, the gratitude session and the networking session. Ethan, are you ready, sir? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's give him the stage. Put our hands together for Ethan. Um, hey, can we talk? Well, I just wanted to say to you, like, why do you have to be always such a loser to me all the time? You always, always treat me like dirt. You never want to hang out. And you're always so mean to me, especially when you're with your friends. God forbid, I'm even in the same room with you when your friends stop over. It's so stupid. You always tell me to leave. It's my house too, and I don't have to go into another room just because you say so. Just because you're older doesn't make you the boss of me. No, forget it, forget it. No, you shut up. You always literally treat me like dirt. And then you're never, ever, ever there for me. Not even as a friend, let alone a brother. Seriously, you don't even know who I am and where we live together. It's pathetic. Really, it is. Ethan, wow. I remember you when I couldn't even hear you. My God, and he's got an amazing singing voice as well, but let's stay on his acting. Your head was cut off in the frame, but that's a technical issue. We keep talking about you gotta make sure you're in frame because we don't have our camera operators to zoom out for you. So just be aware of your framing. But other than that, I'm not going to say anything other than wow. Let's go to Adrian. Ethan, um, that is by far the strongest I've ever seen you perform. Thank you. Particularly when you came back at him. Um, there, there was a, a, a little bit, I, I felt still that you were just trying to get a few of the lines out and the, the opening part of it. Um, and gesturing with the hand was the same gesture. So when you did the fingers quotes, um, it lost a little bit of its impact because you were talking with your hands so much. Um, 
I'd have to look back at the playback to give you a few other comments, but um, I, I think it was, if I was to be shooting that, I would say, okay, let's do one more take. And I would have you do this, this, and this, and then I think you got it. And uh, with the Zoom technicalities, um, practices for yourself. And this, this goes for anyone who's moving in and out of camera. Um, set your monitor on record, your, your video, and practice leaning into a shot so that when you are back here, that when you're back in a wide shot, that you don't come in and do that. Yeah. You have to just get used to the practice of knowing your frame so that when you move in, you come in and ease into a close up so that you can use the just getting familiar with the space around what your camera can see for you. And that will help anyone who's doing scenes where they come in and out of a, a, a frame to stay in frame when we can't move the camera for you. Okay. Right. Thank you. So well done. Hey, and I love your use of coming into a scene. That was brilliant. Great choice. Uh, let's go, Peter, and then Alicia. It almost sound like looked like Adrian was doing a groucho. So we <laughs> lean down a little bit so that you're in the shot. It's called a groucho. Ethan, you scared the crap out of me. That's what I want. I want all of you to be so big that we have to tweak you. We have to shape you. If you don't give enough, a casting director is not going to take the chance and try to build you up. If you give me a lot of energy, now I'm going to see if I can tweak it. That was brilliant. And do me a favor, Ethan. Ethan, It's okay to see the back of an actor for a split second. When you leave the room, I want you to leave. And then when you snap back, no, no. Then we know he said something to you to stop you in your trap. Don't look prepared to come back. Actually try to leave the room. But that was so good, Ethan. You stood your ground. There was fear. You should have been a little bit slower in the beginning because... I don't know what he's going to do. I've never said this before, but, but once you hit your stride and you stood up for yourself, oh my gosh, I would have printed that, called you back, whatever. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. Uh, Alicia. Well, um, actually, both Adrian and, uh, and Peter hit on some of the points that I was going to bring up. But, um, you know, Ethan, I haven't seen you before. Uh, we've never met, so uh, I don't know from where you came to where you are at now, but you know, I applaud you for your efforts. Um, I do think that you can give it some more oomph at the end, right? Um, and I think you felt it too, because I could see you, I, I could see you kind of reaching, but you didn't like come through all the way. So you, you started out, um, you know, with this, with this feeling you know, about, about this brother, right? And I could see it starting to rise and that was good. You know, you, you kept moving the emotion, but I feel like the end, we didn't get the full follow through. So I'd like to see that totally, totally with the full follow through at the end. But otherwise, yes, very, very nice, nicely done. Thank you so much. Uh, Alicia, we always used to let Adrian go last and he'd run out of things to say. He's like, nope, ah. they said it all. So now I have him go first. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know if you noticed that, Adrian. <laughs> so well, you guys. Yeah. I did. Take I both did. Of theirs, you know? <laughs> so Ethan, really good job. Jocelyn, great job. All of you guys are growing each week because we're capturing it on our little YouTube channel. We have interest from network to take this to a regular show, a regular network show. We're working out the details right now, but it's because you guys are doing so well. And, and Jeff, we appreciate you coming into class each week. He's a working actor. He's on a regular series on ABC, right? And, and Reagan's done a lot of great stuff. And a lot of you guys are doing wonderful stuff. So the fact that you guys keep coming back and people are recognizing that. Now, do we have the views on YouTube I'd like to see? Of course not, because we're not sharing it. But if you guys choose to and you feel comfortable, cut your little scenes out and make your own reels out of it and then share your reels. But get your work for the world to see. You guys are doing great work. It's time for them to know that you exist. And in that, 
I'll continually send these links to the producers, directors, casting directors, et cetera, et cetera, and, and do what I can to get you guys out there. But the work you're putting in is worth seeing. You guys are really busting your butt. You're all incredibly busy, but yet you still show up. And, and I'm, I'm just grateful because without you guys, we don't have a BSA live show. We don't have a stage. We have nothing. It's you that make the show, okay? And if you notice the guests that keep coming back each week or each month, it's because of you guys. So I'm really proud of you. This week, you nailed it once again. This was Sitcom Wednesday. Next week, we're discussing doing this again or going into heavy drama or even heavy soap operas. There's a big different pace for soap operas like General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, uh, All, All My Children. We might... Um, Sun, sun, uh, sunset Beach, we might consider doing a soap opera day if you guys are up for it. it. That is hard work. Soap operas are hard work, okay? But if you guys are ready, we'll try it. Um, comments from our guests are gonna be after our young actors tell you what they thought of you guys. So Holden, I hope you're still there. Reese, Ethan, I hope you guys are still I'm there. Here. I'm always here. All right, hold on, I'm gonna wait for you. Ethan, your thoughts on our guests today, on their comments <laughs> and your experience at today's um, show. Today's gratitude day. I really like the feedback that Adrian gave me, uh, Adrian gave me, cause like, I knew I kind of like had that background issue. I wasn't like really prepared for it. So, but like, I had all the lines ready, but some parts I knew like, um, I didn't get correctly but I, I really liked it so far today. Thank you, Ethan. Your, your leaps and bounds each week. Uh, yes, Kendall. Okay, so everyone did amazing. I'm so proud of you all. We've all grown so much and it's, it's amazing. Um, and thank you. Thank you guests for giving us such amazing advice and feedback. Thank you, Kendall. You're doing great. You really brought it home today. Uh, let's go to Reagan. Any thoughts on your experience at BSA Live? She's new to our stage. Um, so far, I've enjoyed it a lot. I, I thank you for coming on to watching us every week, all the guests, and, and just you as well, Tony. Oh. And, um, and I look forward to doing more in the future. Thank you so much, Reagan. We appreciate you. Uh, Jocelyn, any thoughts? First, I'd like to say thank you to like everybody, um, especially for your time, too. And I really appreciated the feedback, like always. And um, I will work on it more and like taking my time. I know I rush through things. And this has been like always my thing. Like I feel like I'm monotone, even though like I feel like different, like in certain lines, but I know where to get the sarcasm, like what part to put that in um, more and like take my time on some other parts. So thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. You're doing great. You're really showing growth every week. Uh, thank Mila. you. Mila, Mila, our little stage director. Um, thank you for being honest, honestly, because telling someone that they did good and that and just leaving it at that is nice, but it's not, it doesn't make them grow. So you know, I know shouldn't do comedic monologues as dramas doesn't work out. And I've learned and I'll work on it and do it next week. But uh, just the fact that you guys come and watch and stay here these two hours means a lot. And it shows that you care. And honestly, we I really appreciate that. So to everybody that was guested, thank you so much for coming on and all the kids. You always blow me away anyway, so you're great. So thank Mila, you. And great. thank you, Tony. Thank you. And Mila, you were great. And what the guests were saying is you can make anything funny. Tragedy is the funniest thing in the world if you yes. get up. If you don't get up, it's tragic. But you ride that fine line all the way on the fence. You make it as, sure. as dark as you can. That's hilarious, right? If it hurts, it's funny if you get up. Right, that's the line. So don't don't ever think you can't make something dark funny. These these guests believe that as well. Yeah. But thank you, Mila, again, showing great. She's going to be, you know, uploading this to YouTube for us. So she spends a lot of time making sure that you guys can see these links. So uh, we really appreciate you, Mila. Okay. You. Um, Reese, your thoughts. Um, I just I really liked the scene I had today. It was really fun. I got to have a lot of fun with it, and I didn't feel nervous, <laughs> which is kind of unusual, but yeah, 
that scene is super fun. And I also liked all the feedback that you gave us. And Mr. Adrian, you were late, but you made it. You made it. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> you have amazing advice. And I just love that you guys come every single week to see our work. Thank you. Yes, and I can testify that Adrian watches these links. So if you guys are on the stage, he will see it, whether it's live or in recording. So always know there's other people watching that aren't here with us right now. Trust me, they are watching. I can guarantee that. So always bring your best. Um, Adrian, we're grateful you're always here. Jeff, I know you're our guest, and someday you may actually may be a member of BSA Live, but we really appreciate you helping these young actors grow because you're a working actor on ABC. I think it was School was your show? Yes. Schooled. Schooled, right? And then during COVID, yeah. they shut down, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. And And how long have you been acting? Uh, ever since 2016, so four years. Wow. And how did you get into it? And all of a sudden, you're on a series, a regular regular role on a big TV show. Um, how I, uh, so it was kind of like a scouting situation sort of thing. Uh, and it's one of those things where they take all your money, even though they don't really need to. <laughs> so how we got here kind of wasn't my, my, my proudest moment, but it got me here. And it got me to, uh, it got me closer to my goals. So. I'm grateful for it and I'm grateful for doing this and it's it's honestly amazing. Thank you so much. You're so talented and we're just honored to have you and keep creating content and bringing it to our stage so we can showcase you. So yeah. we'd like to, any of you guys, if you're creating content, bring it to us. Uh, the only thing I have to be careful of is a copyright written music, yeah. copywritten music, because we don't have the rights to that music. So that's my only challenge, but we can show it without recording it but if you guys get it approved then i'll show it during the recording so other people can see it as well but we're, we're glad you're here hold in my little jim carrey robin williams how are you sir i'm good um uh um so um i want to thank everybody for coming as far as notes go i thank you so much for the notes um there wasn't that much that was individualized toward me which i i i it can be bad. It can be good. I hope it's the latter. I hope it's the latter. <laughs> he loves his critique. So we're all going to give you critiques. I'm going to let the three judges <laughs> or guests critique Attack you. Attack me! You open the door. He loves it and needs it. So, um, Peter, give him some love or some criticism. Your choice. Hurt me. <laughs> Make me cry. So Hold in. I'm going, to de I'm going to destroy you. I'm gonna put you into a pile of rubble. Oh no! So you can oh, I lost it. <laughs> but like I, but like I said to you, like I said to you last week, you're an incredible comedian. All the more reason you need to bone up on your drama. Robin Williams went to freaking Juilliard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he 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 was a dramatic genius. Watch Awakenings. Watch a uh, 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 one hour photo. Watch uh, uh, the movie he did with Al Pacino. Uh, I think it was. Um, Oh, it was about sleep. It had a sleep uh, title to it. But anyway, Richard Pryor, watch him. George Carlin. All these people took, took tragedies and made them funny. Remember the tragedy comic mask of drama. Behind every tragedy there's comedy. Behind every comedy there's drama. And then you'll, you're going to be brilliant, my friend. I'm, I'm dying to pay 20 bucks to see your first movie. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. And Norman Lear, we can't forget Norman Lear made a great living in the 70s doing situational comedies based on tragedy and, and what's really happening. All the family. Yeah. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> yep. uh, let's go to Adrian Carr and then we're going to wrap up with Alicia, our guest today. So Adrian Carr, any comments for Holden? For Holden? Yeah, he wants oh. it. Oh. <laughs> that Holden, you know, just getting serious for a moment. You suck. <laughs> I mean, I knew it all along. It's really, you know, I mean, I, I just needed say, okay. to say that so that you really. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have broke, Adrian. Why'd you break? <laughs> no, I wanted to move. I wanted it was to move going. We had a scene go when it was going. I know, no, I know. He, he was, go he, he was. That was perfect, shot. Adrian. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, Holden, no, I mean, uh, taking on what Peter had said about um, looking at dramatics uh, as a comedic actor, um, you have so much more soul in you than you think you have, than you, you know you have. And we know it's there. So um, 
check out some of the Robin Williams movies that are not comedies. Mm-hmm. There's a handful of them, and and he's extraordinary. But he also works his comedy in, even in some of those drama, dramatic roles, you'll see the comic genius slip in a little thing to give us some levity, even in the heaviest moments. So um, he's a good example to look at, um, more so than a Jim Carrey. Um, but uh, this is to address the class. I forget sometimes how young you are because the work you're doing is a lot of it's adult work and we critique based on the characters that are portrayed and they are older characters and seeing young people take on these roles and try to bring the depth and maturity that we know the roles require is a huge challenge. And each time we see work repeated, the understanding you have of being able to bring drama or depth to those characters is quite extraordinary. And it, that, that's one of the reasons why we keep coming back because we can see the growth. And yes, sometimes we can be tougher than other weeks. It's because you're so close to the threshold of making it to that level uh, that we keep pushing you. And cold readings aside, you know, they're, they're different. But when you're coming on with prepared scenes, um, your level of, and given the constraints of Zoom classes, um, I, I can't wait for the time where we can see you in a classroom together, face to face, where you're in a room working together. It'll be a whole different ball game. But what you're learning now with the technical restrictions placed on you is going to help you so much when you start working on camera on set because you're already working within the frame constraints of uh, the Zoom. But um, no, I, I enjoy every, every every time I watch you guys. Thank you, Adrian. It means the world to us. Adrian was one of my coaches when I was coming up and I'm really grateful he, he comes back each week. And actually I took class from Peter too, didn't I, Peter? You, you taught a nice yeah, for a minute. Yeah, um, um, you always say it's theater, but I have st- I have done film, okay? <laughs> of course, yes. <laughs> no, but, yes, yes. but to be honest with you, I have to echo what, what Adrian is saying. We love the craft of acting so much. We love film and theater so much that we're drawn to see just what new things you guys are going to do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we give you – we can't hold back because we respect you. If we held back and we weren't strong with you guys – you're not going to improve it. We don't respect you. But you are artists. Don't ever forget that. Yep. Go to that dark side if you have to. Go to that pleasant side if you have to. Enjoy feeling. Get fingertip control over all these levels that you need to have as a thespian. Don't be an actor. Be a thespian. Don't be a conveyor belt. Be epic. That's what Tony's trying to do for you guys. To be yep. epic. I see it in you guys. I saw it in you in the first day we started this. Alicia, we cannot thank you enough for spending two and a half hours plus with us. And um, she just randomly called me the other week and said that she's a COVID compliant officer and maybe we could refer her to some sets. And I said, I could do better than that. (laughs) And this is the better than that. This is BSA Live. And I'm very honored to have you here. So Alicia, what were your uh, comments or thoughts of your experience today? Oh, thank you. Um, Overall, I really enjoyed my time with you guys. Um, I did want to say, you know, some of these, some of these scenes really reminded me of of scenes when I was growing up, you know, like uh, for an example, movies like Goonies, you know, you, Uh, you kids, I don't know if any of you have seen Goonies, but you kids are good enough to do something like that, where you can be in a Steven Spielberg movie and and be in a really fun situation with other kids um, and do drama and comedy because uh, you know there is no comedy without some drama. There's always some drama in comedy, so you have to realize that. So Holden, that would be my note for you: is definitely, you know really exercise that drama you can look for something that even you're afraid to do that you'd be scared to do it because maybe it's too you think it's out of your league 
but don't don't think that way. Just say, you know what, I'm going to challenge myself with something this dramatic or this off, you know, off personality for me, you know, and challenge yourself and do it and film yourself doing that. The other um, the other ideas that I had for you was threefold. Um, first of all, you can watch dramatic movies and c comedic movies with the sound off. And I want you to see their faces and I want you to see their actions. And it's gonna, it's gonna feel weird, but for an example, in film school, that's one of the things that we did in film school was watch, watch movies with the sound off. So we could pinpoint different things. And so if you can do that um, and see what you find out, that will help you, you know, for yourself uh, with your own characters. The other exercise that I was thinking would be really good for you, um, we mentioned Harry Potter earlier. Harry Potter is rich with beautiful dialogue. Why don't you take uh, one of the Harry Potter books and, you know, uh, read some of the dialogue in different emotions. So you take, you know, you can Google, there's so many emotions. I mean, God, you know, it must be an array of a hundred emotions, but you can Google emotions so you can see all the different emotions. And let's say note down 10 very different emotions and start reading uh, a line from Harry Potter or whatever book you like in each of those emotions until you really get it, you know, from fear all the way up to exhilaration. Um, and just go through all those different emotions with that same line. Don't do a different line, that same line. Just pick a, any line and just do it in those emotions. And that will really help you to, you know, find, find that scale that, that you can reach and then you can do it with anything. Um, the last thing is understanding the subtext. Understanding the subtext very, very well will help all of you, no matter, no matter how well or, or how um, a little unstable we were on the subtext today, everybody could, could use some understanding the subtext. If you really, really get it, you really understand what they're really trying to say, um, and you understand what the lines mean, you're gonna control that all the better. Because once you have an understanding, your control goes way up. You can control it. So take, take the responsibility to really learn what you're trying to say and learn what it means. And then you'll add that much more control to what you're doing. Thank you so much, Alicia. You guys, let's give them all a big round of applause. Let's give ourselves a big round of applause. You guys, it means a lot. I mean, these are valuable days, valuable time. When we come out of COVID, man, you're going to have a bunch of people that you can call and say, are you filming? Are you filming? Are you filming? So I put who was our guest in every one of the YouTube uh, showcases. So when Mila creates a link, go see who visited and, and maintain a relationship with our guests. And, and you never know, you might be able to work on one of their sets. Okay. With that being said, Mila, do we have something to wrap the show up with this week? Um, so it was that video, but we weren't sure about copyright, so we played it in the beginning. Um, do you want to play it again and we just take a risk and if it gets shut down, we have to deal with it? Or do you feel confident it won't get shut down? I honestly have no idea. YouTube is very unpredictable. Mila, is the problem is, is it's Billie Eilish. Oh, you can't right. do that. Yeah. No, so <laughs> pick another link. I gave you multiple links. Pick a link and we'll end the show with a, a fun little link. And then, uh, and then you guys, you guys can chat amongst yourselves for a few minutes. But then Mila's got to download this footage and then upload it to YouTube. So we'll have to give her her computer back. And Cindy needs her computer back as well. And I think you guys need to go as well. So, do you have an idea of what you want to play, Mila? Play. Um, I have a lot of case. Your I have Casey's videos here. Uh, not Casey. Let's do one of Faithlin's. Let's do my little seven-year-old Faithlin. So okay. pick, pick her um one of her scenes you have a scene in there yes um or it doesn't tell me which one's which like as far as doesn't a monologue here everything oh. she does is great this is my little seven-year-old faithlin i got her when she was six and she comes every once a month every co couple times a week so this is faithlin you guys great show we'll see you guys next week same time same place 
I'm Teacher Tony, and this is BSA Live. Go for it, Mila. Let's do this. This was the one that was playing. The other ones weren't available. Woody, look where we are! Oh, Woody. Woody's so cray cray. Woody, let's put him down. Woody, come on, let's talk. Um, let's, let's talk to my fellow friends. Woody. Woody, say hi to everybody. Hello. We got our new pet. But, I mean, Woody, let's eat. Woody, let's play ball. So that's my little four-year-old and my little seven-year-old, and I take them at two, as young as two years old, and work with them. I work with animals. I have sets. Uh, actually, Alicia knows uh, one of the animals that's been on set. Um, you know, Atticus, he's got yeah. IMDb credits. Yeah. So I work, I work with all sorts of stuff. So if you guys want to refer people, you guys get a whole free month if you refer one student for one month. You guys get a whole free month. That's more for your parents than you guys. All right? <laughs> um, you guys, great show. Really good show. Remember, have fun like Faithlin has. Spirit mm -hmm. of fun like she has. Yeah. Don't forget that inner child inside of you. That's why I play That's why I play her videos. I want you to remember that's still in you somewhere. Let that come out in comedy, okay? I wore my comedy hat today, and uh, I wear many hats. But today, it's your teacher, Tony, okay? You guys, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Great to see you.